Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the uh, board of, the continuation of the Board of Select meeting. We opened earlier in the executive session to discuss strategies with respect to collective bargaining updates with the town manager relative to police, fire, dispatch, and DPW unions, and to construct uh, strategy sessions in preparation for contract negotiations with the non-union uh, personnel relative to the police chief. And uh, continuing as we usually do, let's uh, start with the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Now sticking with form. I'd like to start with the public session, public forum. Residents are invited to share ideas, opinions, or ask questions regarding town government. Is there anybody in our audience who would like to step forward to the microphone? Wow. Okay, we've got a great audience today, too. Okay, so then let's move on to, um, I guess on to agenda. Okay, so we're gonna, uh, uh, item, Item one, uh, board of will consider approving minutes for 516 and 66 parade permits. <coughs> the board of Southern will consider approving parade permit request from Ricardo Barraza, race director on behalf of the Michael Lisno Respite Center for the 20th annual Michael's 5K run walk to be held on Saturday, October 21st from 10 to 1. 350 participants. Number two, Consider, uh, we'll consider a parade permit for request from Daniel McIntyre on behalf of the Parks and Recreation Commission for the Horribles Parade to be held July 4, 2017. Marathon fund request. Uh, at the uh, Hopton Junior Hockey Renting Ice and Foxbow Sports Center for $2,000. And payment towards sock purchase for Tri Valley Sports, 40 pairs of $400. Um, number four, ambulance fund gifts. And uh, so are there any breakouts on the one through four? Uh, I will obviously break out number four, please. Okay. Sorry, number five. Oh, number five, sorry, yes, thank you. Anybody else break out in? I, I only want to know if Mr. McIntyre <coughs> is going to bring his bear to the Horribles Parade this year. <laughs> Other than that, no. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Herrick? Nothing to break out. Okay, so the uh, chair will seek a motion to approve one, two, three, and four. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, Mr. Tedson, please take number five. So, since the, uh, the passing of Tom McIntyre, Seems like every week, every meeting, we come and, and we see the, uh, the the request to consider gifts to the ambulance fund. And every every uh, every meeting, it's uh, it's just great to see that these people. I'm looking at the at the roster of people that have donated, and there's still more that are donating, and um, it just speaks volumes of, of what Tommy meant to the town. Uh, of course, I'm very jaded because it's what he meant to me was more than what most people know but um, it's just it's really nice to see the Hopkinton and like Mrs. Wright said outside of Hopkinton as well it's it's Tommy af affected people you know region countrywide nationwide and uh, it's nice to see these donations keep trickling in and and uh, knowing the the lineage between Tommy and the fire department and the fire chief that uh, you know chances are this stuff is not going to you know if you donate to a, to a big charity a lot of the charities go to the big CEOs um, salaries and and fluff this is going to go to something a grassroots thing I'm sure to, to help Hopkinton and people from Hopkinton people visiting Hopkinton immediately and uh, I think it's great so keep it coming it's great to see so on that I'd like to make a motion to accept the uh, ambulance fund donations. Second. Any further discussion? There none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That passes unanimously also. 
Okay, next one. Annual appointment by Board of Selectmen and Town Manager. Board of Selectmen will review the expiring terms of the respective board and committee members will consider appointing individuals for various terms as outlined in supporting exhibit below. Okay, let me just open up nine. Lazarus, can you take us through these as a, as a big list? In, in fact, through the chair, um, Mrs. Lazarus will provide the details. I suggest that the discussion be broken into two parts. The first part, the board approve all the appointments with the exception of the following boards or committees. One, I believe the, yeah, the, personnel, the personnel committee, the youth commission, and then the marathon fund committee, and then the permanent building committee. Through the chair. Yes. So why are we suggesting to break these four out? Yes, which is the second piece. There will be need for the board to discuss the individual appointments for various reasons, including where we have uh, an interest on the part of existing members and new, new uh, residents who are interested in joining that committee more than the vacancies that are existing. It's not so a bad place to be. Exactly. Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair, yes, Mr. are there other individuals uh, here with us this evening that are applying for reappointment or appointment that are not on one of these four committees? Personnel, Youth Commission, Marathon Fund Committee, or Permanent Building Committee? And Personnel Committee. Yeah. I believe I see a hand in the, in the audience right now. I see Mr. Kinnicki, and he mentioned for CPCs here. Okay. Are there any others? Yes. If you're looking for people that volunteer but are not on the committee? Yeah. I guess my question is if there's people that are here specific to a committee whether it's these four or others um, I'm always in favor of giving them an opportunity to say hello and you know brief 30 seconds you know what's the interest kind of thing um, so I would suggest that we add to the list of make sure I'm on the right page here personnel committee youth commission marathon fund committee permanent building committee CPC and any other committee where someone might be here to, and has an interest, but I'm not sure of any other committee. Is there any other committees? Yeah, there's the Tax Relief Committee. So there's somebody here from Tax Relief? Or I don't four? know if there's anyone here, but there yeah. was a late applicant and there are three vacancies. So. Well, that's an easy one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, I see yes. a couple of hands going up in the audience. Can we find out what sure. people are interested in? Absolutely. Could you please uh, speak up? Uh, reappointment to the uh, Affordable Housing Fund Committee, Kathy Boy. <coughs> and I was speaking to Connor today, trying to find a breakdown of exactly what this committee is specified to do, and we were kind of not finding what we needed, and I uh, was wondering if it would be something the selectman might be able to provide for me. Yeah, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I, I don't know if they've met since 2011. Yeah, but let's come back to that. Okay, okay. Sort yeah, to that, so that, that, that's why it's a little different. So Affordable Housing Committee. Yeah. Any others? It, so you said CPC. Uh, Anything else? You? Well, I had volunteered to serve on any of the ones where you needed, but I think it was Board of Health and Cable TV, you know, were, were ones that looked like there might be a uh, vacancy. And uh, so I'm on John Hamilton. Um, so, Mr. Chair, I would suggest that we keep a, a non-preference kind of right there for us ready to slot, yes. but we don't need to break out all the committees because it's that situation. If, if I may, Mr. But Chair, um, and I had a little trouble keeping track of all these, and I went through all the applications. Maybe Mrs. Lazarus has a better count than I do. Um, I saw quite a few applications for the Cable Advisory Committee and also for the HCAM board, and I thought those applications exceeded the number of positions. 
Yeah. The H -CAM board, yes, HCAM Board of Directors. Exceeds the number. We have more applicants. Yes. And how about Cable Advisory? That seemed to have a lot of people, too. No, uh -huh. in, in fact, we only have one active member. No. So I'm adding HCAM to my list, Mr. Chair. Yeah. We'll kind of clean this up here. HCAM, I saw one vacancy and four applicants. Yes. And yep. Cable Advisory. Uh, Mr. Kamal, why are we doing these all at once when we can't give people ample time to? It, it just seems that we're doing. Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, Mr. Murdoch has a question. Yeah. Yeah. I guess if there is one opening on a committee with multiple applicants, I don't see how that can be on a consent agenda. No, no, it's not. No, this is no, 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 not on a consent no. agenda. There's no consent. Well, there's, there's another one too. But that's what we're working on trying to filter out. Yeah, that's yeah. why we're splitting it up. That's the plan. Yeah, yeah. because no, this is this is a, a full agenda item. Yeah, uh, Mr. Chair. So yes. In terms of background, there is a lot of work that has been done in the office by Maria Glynn. She has contacted the chairs of the individual committees in town. She has received their input in terms of who is willing to continue as a member, depending on whether their term is expiring or not expiring. She has also consulted with the chairs with regard to if the chair has received any interest from members of the public. And also, finally, she has also consulted with the chair in terms of people who have expressed an interest in joining a respective committee in town. So there's a lot of work that has gone into the presentation that is before you tonight. And our suggestion is there are committees where there are members whose terms are expiring and their request to participate has been confirmed and there's no other interest that has been expressed. Mm -hmm. And most importantly too, I forgot to mention this, all the vacant positions are on the town website. They've been advertised appropriately. It just, it, it just seems like when we're, if, if we're doing these, these broad stroke appointments that we're not uh, giving our, it just seems like we're doing our due diligence with each one. Because sometimes we, you know, we take each, each. So, so Mr. Chair, I think that's one. why I'm trying to break yeah. out certain ones. Kind of like the consent agenda. I'm looking to break out some of these committees mm -hmm. for reappointment for various reasons. So on my list, and this is where, raise your hand if you're here for something else, personnel committee, and some of these are because Mr. Kamal is suggesting as well. Youth Commission, Marathon Fund Committee, Permanent Building Committee, CPC, Affordable Housing Committee, HCAM Board of Directors. Those are the ones that I've heard for whatever reason and through uh, with audience interest, I have suggest I'm gonna suggest that we not reappoint in a singular motion, but look at these individually. Okay. Were there any? Those are mine. Yeah, that's great. Um, I don't have any others in my mind. I don't know if anybody else does. No, I, I, I think that if we have not enough applicants to fill it, it, it sends us to go over it if we're just going to appoint those people in. Correct. You know, if we have four applicants for two spots, we have to obviously vet that process. If we have two applicants for four spots, it sends us to talk about it because you're in. Yeah. Through the chair, one of the reasons that I'm suggesting we look at a couple of these and it's not because of any situation that I'm aware of this year, but in years past, there have been people serving our community, great volunteers, but for whatever reason, the square peg was in the round hole and it wasn't working very well. And there were some issues because of that. So to do a, a uniform reappointment of everybody without at least thinking through where there might be some challenges, uh, I don't think is a great service to the community. I don't know of any of those situations, but I know there's people here tonight with other interests and things they may want to share, and that's why I want to give them an opportunity to speak. We've got some time on the agenda for this, and Beautiful. having done this many times, this can get a little dicey if we don't take our time and sort through this. Okay, I've so a couple Mr. Blow up where, do you where, so, uh, Ms. Lazarus, where do you suggest we start? Well, I just wanted to clarify too, there's a woman, uh, Donna Dubay was listed as an applicant for a couple, and she has withdrawn her interest, so your motion to appoint would not include her. Okay. Yes. And also to clarify, earlier there was a comment regarding the Cable Advisory Committee. There's one existing member. There are two applicants. The po committee has three positions. That's why I had not listed it. Uh -huh. HCAM. 
No, Cable Advisory Committee. Sorry. Different from the HCAM Board of Directors. Yeah, no, okay. I, I wrote that one down as a number eight. Yeah. So you have that one. Yeah. If, if I may yes. just clarify with that, though, in addition to the existing member, who I think is Maureen B. Marler, I think, yes. I see three Cable Advisory applicants. I see John Hamilton, Kathleen Culler, and Samantha Dings are listing Cable Advisory. So that's three in addition to the existing member for two positions. Samantha, sorry, we didn't have Samantha. She's listed as Cable We have you under the HCAM board. No, no, yes. no, no, she's listed Cable Advisory Committee, CONCOM or Sustainable Green. In her, in her application. So well, then that, that, that helps. So we that should take another look at that. Yeah, if there's a spot in there, either one of the others. But, that, 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 but that means that's another commission, a board, that needs to be discussed because there are clearly more than, there are more applicants than there are spots available on that one. On CONCOM uh, and... Um, no, on Cable Advisory. No, Cable Advisory, that's what I'm saying. But yeah. If the other people don't have anything... Done, right, so that should be an eighth, an eighth board that needs closer uh, attention for okay. assignment. Which one's that, Claire? Cable advisory. So that's number eight, cable yeah. advisory. Okay. Oh, I actually had, oh yeah, cable advisory, yes, I already put them down, yes. Elaine, how many committees are in total do we have? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fair answer. We have a lot. <laughs> yes, we have a lot. That's a fair <laughs> answer. Look at that sheet. Okay, so. So where do you want to start? Start at the top. So the top well, should we start with the should we start with the uh, uh, well personnel committee? Or you want to start, start with the breakouts, or do you want, should we start with the uh, with the mass appointment? I would suggest that we start with the breakouts because we'll get a feel pretty quickly for mm -hmm. if we're ready to and organized enough to sort through all of them together or maybe we'll do all of them like this I don't know okay. in years past we've done them one at a time in years yeah. past we've done them in groupings so it depends let's I would start with the individuals and see how well we're doing before we get to the mass grouping okay yeah so then I so Mr. Chair yes. would you mind if we do this in alphabetic order oh, okay that's so fine. not all over the place sure so we'll start yeah of the applicant or of the committee? Uh, of the committees. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Why are yeah. you looking at me when you said so we're not all over the place? <laughs> we'll, okay. start with, yeah, we'll start with the cable advisory committee. Okay. okay. Cable advisory. Yes, we have two vacancies and there are three expressed interests. Okay, so is anybody here from cable advisory? We have uh, John Hamilton, Kathleen Kala, and Samantha Gaines. Oh, yes, please. Oh, yeah, well, well, one at a time. Please just stay. <coughs> yes, Good evening. Good Thanks evening. for coming. Thank you all for serving our town so well. And uh, I'd like to join a little more uh, in depth. Uh, I'm sorry, your, your name and address. Samantha Dings, Three Wordy Circle. Oh, thank you. And um, I volunteer for HCAM, and I also volunteer at the Senior Center. And I just want to get a little deeper into um, volunteering in this community. It's, uh, you know, I've been here for almost 18 years now. And um, so I think something like cable advisory or also in for the HCAM board um, would be a good step uh, into a, a deeper involvement taking care of this community and helping it grow. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, great. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kathleen Culler, and my address is 17 Ledgestone Drive. Um, I have um, worked with Jim Cousins at HCAM off and on since 1998, and I've always been interested in uh, Hopkinton as a town. I've done a good bit of volunteering through the years for the school system and for a lot of different organizations. And um, 
adding HCAM to serving the town on a board, for me, that would be a first step in, in getting involved in town government formally. So uh, I'm, just, I'm interested in combining uh, all the work that I've done with HCAM through the years with working with the town. So, and uh, I, I've been uh, behind the camera for a long time watching all of you, and I very much appreciate all the time that you've given to this town. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, Mr. Kamala, what, what, um, what are, what's the charge of the Cable Advisory Committee? Is it? Yeah, um, I think I can summarize it in two sentences. First being the advisory team to the town manager in negotiating the contracts with the cable companies that come into town uh, to monitoring how those contracts are implemented. So Thank Mr. You. Chair, yes. I'm not sure if the first two applicants are talking about HCAM board or they're talking about the cable advisory committee. Right, that's what's I'm confused. There's two different entities here. There's the cable advisory committee that helps the town manager negotiate cable contracts for the community. And there's the HCAM board that does this. So are we clear about which committee we're talking about? Just we make sure. We specifically call that the cable advisory committee. When I was speaking, I was speaking from the perspective of someone who's worked on television here in Hopkinton. But I know that this is a different entity. I just don't have any experience on a town board in Hopkinton. So do you mind if I ask a question? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So Kathleen, um, do you want to be on the HCAM board or the Cable Advisory Committee? Well, the HCAM board has a ton of people jumping into that. Mm -hmm. So when I spoke with Mr. Cousins, he said, you know, we have this other thing going on that you could work on, and that would get you uh, some town board experience. Okay. So you're good with cable committee. I am. And Sam, you're good with cable committee? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure. Okay. And Mr. Hamilton, you're good with? I'm good with cable, cable committee. committee. Okay. Good. That's why. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. But I'm also good with other, other committees. I, I actually, you know, didn't have a just one. Um, but, uh, this really would be my first step in getting more involved. Uh, uh, for Kimball Road, Hopkinton, John Hamilton. Um, I've been in Hopkinton for about six years. Uh, I thought cable might be a good one for me because <clears throat> I'm a patent attorney. Um, with uh, I do electrical engineering. I deal with uh, transmissions of electrical signals and, and part of my practice. But um, I also worked 12 years with the Food and Drug Administration. Um, so I thought, well, maybe Board of Health if there's a vacancy there too. So I really don't, you know, wherever there's a need, I, I'd like to get involved. So. Great. Well, we're going to find you a spot somewhere tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Sit tight, John. <laughs> Wait, before yes. Mr. Hamilton leaves, I, I also noticed um, on your application that you actually worked on Situates Cable TV uh, Committee. Is that correct? I did um, 15 years ago, and it wasn't very active. So. There wasn't a lot to do. Mm -hmm. so but you had a, a smattering, anyway, yeah. in working with the cable station. Right. Thank you. So, Mr. Chair, it's my understanding yes. we have three applicants for the cable committee with two spots open, mm -hmm. correct? Plus yes. another sitting member, is that correct? Or how many sitting members? One, 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 more, one. one more, so it's a three-person yeah. committee. Yeah. So, uh, in light of the interest of the three residents, and with my understanding of some of the background of one of the residents, uh, more so than a couple of the others, I would, but also I guess another question, on the HCAM board, not the further muddy things here, um, how many openings do we have for the HCAM board? One. One, and how many applicants for the HCAM board? Four. 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 That doesn't help my argument. It doesn't, okay. you're correct. All right. Um, Okay. Okay. So then, let's, let's, okay. So, um, how do you want to proceed with uh, with this one? Well, well, can I ask Mr. Hamilton a question directly? Absolutely. Mr. Hamilton, based on your resume and your willingness to jump on any and all of these mm -hmm. committees, um, do you have any committee before us tonight that you have a strong preference? Is your your uh, cable supersede your Board of Health? No. Nope. Uh, do them all. No, no particular one. Okay. Thank you. 
Um, on that line, I also wondered if um, Ms. Dings had other, yeah. I should be able to find her application, but I've got so many things here. Um, were there other boards that you were interested in? Did you say Sustainable Green or? I thought there was another one. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any spots on any of those? You said H came board H in addition to cable advisory. Okay. See, now we're figuring out how this takes so long every time we do this. Yeah. Right, that's why. Yeah, that's why. That's why we, I, I, I have to realize we had. So is, is Samantha one of those four applicants for the HCAM board? Yes. Also no. All right, so. No, she's okay. a fit. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, well, if. Um, Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen appoint uh, Kathleen Culler and Samantha Dings to the Cable Advisory Committee for FY18. No, are these terms, Mr. Cull? What is annual? She has a three year stuck at Thames. So we'll have uh, one person have a one year term, one a two year term, another a three year term. Yeah. So there's a person currently residing on the committee who would be the three-year term person. That's Maureen View Miller. Mm -hmm. Unless she was, was she appointed to a shorter term? The information I have is that her term expires this year. Okay, so, okay, so I would, my motion is to include appointing that individual, I'm sorry, Mr. Name, uh, to a three-year term uh, Samantha Dings to a two-year term and Kathleen Color to a one-year term for the cable committee. Do I have a second? I'm just looking over this, uh, the numbers. this board here. I'm just all these lists of uh, Well, the, the current board, board member will be up this year anyway, so we oh, can so just reappoint right now and get that one, so we don't have to do that again in August. Unless they don't want to. Could I ask a procedural question? I, I'm just wondering if we would do better to do the appointments individually, um, simply because um, I feel that Mr. Hamilton, having already had some experience on the cable committee, um, would would be well qualified. Um, I think they're all well qualified, but I just wondered if we should if we should vote the members individually rather than in a, in a team. Well, it, 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 we, we've got we probably have sixty appointments to get through mm -hmm. today. Okay, so that's why it sure. might be just a little bit more efficient. Um, so we have a we have a, a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Who second? Didn't you second? It? I didn't second it. Oh, I thought you second. Oh, trying. you said wait a second. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a second to my motion. <laughs> Take the vote. I my my concern about that is I don't want to pass on Mr. Hamilton if we don't have another board to put him on. Uh, we'll have another board. Well, I'm not seeing the board of health. Or well, Board of Health is in my two positions. I'm aware of that. But there, there were some other things that he talked about. I'm trying to find. I'm sorry, I didn't bring my list with me of what I actually. It's right here. Right, we we have actually one. have it right here. Yeah, there's always going to be open. There's always a spot for return on a, a board, too. Right. It's non stop. Yeah, there's a few that could use a good attorney. All right, so, Mr. Hamilton, how do you feel about us taking a waiver on you on this one and you promising us to stick tight for the rest of our time to get you in? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Then I'll second that. Okay, any further Motion. discussion? Ms. Wright? Mr. Hurd? All set? All set. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. So unanimous. Okay. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your patience, Mr. Hamilton. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Kamala, where are we going yes. next? The next one will be mm -hmm. conservation. 
Spanish. No. Uh, yeah, personnel committee. Okay, who do we have personnel committee? I'm trying to find them. Yeah, the, we have Curtis Morrison, uh, whose term is expiring, and we also received an, an applications from uh, Gary Russell and Patricia Sinicol. Are any of those three here tonight? They're not sure. a chair of the committee. Um, Patricia Sinicol uh, expresses her regret. She's not well tonight. She's not feeling well. And, um, I thought Gary would be here, but he's not. Have to answer any questions or represent in any way. Mr. Morrison looking for a reappointment? I'm sorry? Mr. Morrison's looking to stay on? Yes, he is. So, Mr. Chair, yes. through the chair, Mr. Kamal, Mrs. Rogers, so for the personnel committee, we have how many members? Five? Correct. And we have how many that are current and still there? We have. If you count Mr. Morrison, it's four. So we have four, and how many applicants do we have? We have, no, I've counted Mr. Morrison, assuming he's continuing. Mm -hmm. Then we have two applicants for one position. And okay. the names of the two applicants, please. Uh, Gary Russell and Patricia Sinicol. Okay. And, and either one's here to? Well, as the chair of the personnel committee do you have any dealings with these other two people or um well yes i've had the opportunity to meet gary russell recently and can talk a little bit about his background and i know patricia hunts and nicole professionally pretty well okay. i don't mean to i thought we had just three members standing on the committee right now kathy laflash myself and if mr morrison is reappointed kurt morrison Sorry? The other Kathy has left? Yes. That's why we, I, we have two vacancies and two week. candidates. There are two vacancies. Uh, she okay, two that's correct. Two, two vacancies and two applicants. So I would like to <laughs> make a motion. Two outstanding applicants, yeah, okay. I must say. I'll make a motion oh. to uh, put Gary Russell and Patricia Senegal on and Curtis Morrison on the personnel committee. Second. Thank you. Are there terms, Mr. Kamal? Are these? I think it's a staggered term deal, isn't it? They all should be. Yeah. Want to do the three, two, one again? Okay. The charge doesn't say. I think the assumption was uh, it's been a long. This is a long-term committee. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, three-year terms. Yeah. They're all yeah, three-year terms. Three -year three -year three -year all three-year three terms. Yeah. Okay, so add that to your oh. amendment. Absolutely. Friendly amendment. Okay. Friendly amendment. Okay. Second. Okay, any further discussion? That's it. No, that's it. Good. It's an easy one. All those in favor of uh, appointing two people for two positions? <laughs> Gary Russell and Aye. Patricia Senecor. Aye. 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 Okay, unanimous. <laughs> okay, now. Uh, <laughs> What's, what's, up, what's up next? Youth Commission. Okay, Youth Commission. Cables are over there. Mr. Kamala, did we miss the HCAM Board of Directors? We're, we're going alphabetically. Yes. We're no. the <laughs> I'm real good at yelling. I'm calm. <laughs> calm. Yeah. yeah we and I think H comes before P. Exactly. comes before that. Yeah. 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 And con calm. <laughs> Yeah, well, sometimes we go by the Keep Tech alphabet, but even still. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, we missed the HCAM Board of Directors. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So let's do HCAM. Fire that one up. Yeah. Okay. So is uh, do we have a charge for the HCAM? Uh, so we know if, if we have to ask any questions of anybody. Oh, yeah, is there anybody here for the HCAM position? Okay. Two. So we have two people. One we just appointed and one other person right now. Okay. So can can someone be on both HCAM and cable advisory, or is there a conflict? No conflict. No conflict. It's not my name. There is. There is money. Yeah, yeah, there, there, may there may be a conflict. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There is. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's 
But for the HCAM board, through the yeah. chair, how many positions are on the HCAM board? I believe they said one. One. But how many total are there? Board of Directors? Five. 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 Yeah. We have four current members, correct? Who are they? The Board of Selectmen only has one appointment to it. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Okay. No, yeah. This was for Chuck, who yes. came off last, yeah. last, 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 last meeting. Okay. okay, so we have one appointment that we make, and how many applicants do we have? Four. Four. Four, Four. of which Samantha Dings is one. Okay. And who else? Who Michelle are the other three? So, uh, so, yeah, Darlene Hayes, I believe Murdoch. we received, we received uh, a call from Darlene that she was unable to attend tonight taking care of a family member out of state. Okay. Who else? And who else? Uh, Andrew, Andrew Ritz. Ritz. Michelle Maddock. Okay. And Sam. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, Michelle, do you want to pop in? You already met Sam. I like them. Michelle Murdoch, 53 School Street. Um, I was interested in serving on the HCAM board because I'm looking for another volunteer position. I've done the 300th anniversary in the Charter Committee, so I think the HCAM board might be a little bit easier. Um, I was the first news director for HCAM TV when they introduced the news program. I did that for almost four years. Uh, I've been a reporter, followed town government and everything else for over 10 years. So I feel I have a good background on what's going on. And I know a lot of the boards and committees and the people on those boards. So I was just you know, looking for, and uh, technically, I guess you could say, when I was at HCAM, I actually worked for the board of directors <laughs> indirectly. Um, you know, but uh, I know a lot about HCAM. I was there for a long time. And I was just interested in uh, doing another volunteer position. Great. Thank you very much. That's about it. Chair, are there any other applicants here this evening? Yes, yeah, so Sam's just pointing to Michelle and saying, take her. Yeah. <laughs> so, there, I don't know, is this our turn to talk? Yes. So, I heard Michelle say she's been on other boards and she thinks this will be easier. <laughs> um, from what I know of Michelle, I don't think easy is anything she eases into. I think <laughs> there's nothing she does is easy. So, um, I'm I'm ready to make a motion if if uh, the people on the board are well, if ready to if accept if it's it. Secondary, we can still consider. We can still uh, talk about stuff. Uh, I move for Michelle Murdoch to put her on the HCAM board of directors. Second. Second. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? Okay then. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Unanimous. Thank you, Michelle. Take it easy, Michelle. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's next? And now. Okay, CPC, yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. We should go. I think C's the next letter. Yep. After A's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's H C A M, so we're going to go by that. <laughs> okay. We might as well do the Conservation Commission, too. Um, CPC? CPC, let's go to CPC. What do we have? Uh, how many positions how many are open? How many are on? The, 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 the questions Mr. Hur would normally ask you. There's one appointed position open, yep. okay. and that's basically uh, <laughs> my position. <laughs> okay. And how many applicants yeah. are going for your position? As far as I know, you're looking at it. Okay. Yeah. okay <laughs> Why are you here? <laughs> uh, Henry Kinnicky, 47 Teresa Road. I've been on the, on the committee for six years now, and I basically said I'm going to serve one more term, and this would be my last term. Uh, my policy in working with the committee has always been try and do what is in the best interest of the town, where we can get the most bang for our dollar. And uh, so far it seems to be uh, effective. Um, I was appointed chairman three years ago, and uh, we seem to be running a pretty pretty tight committee at this point. So that's why I would like to serve when I serve again. Thanks, Henry. I don't think there's any contest here, but I just want to take the opportunity to say, uh, Mr. Konecki it has just done a great job with that board. He's fair. He runs a tight ship. He knows all the ins and outs. He asks the tough questions um, and seems completely committed to um, uh, the mission of what the Community Preservation Commission is. And uh, so I'm, I'm just delighted if he's willing to stick with it for one more year. I just can't see enough good things about him. 
Mr. Uh, Ted Stone just gave me a candy to try and squelch my <laughs> questions. <laughs> uh, Mr. Knicky, thank you. As always, great job on all the things you do in town. What are your views on active versus passive recreation funding for Hopkinton? Depends on the project. Um, you know, we, we try and look at each one individually. Uh, we've, we've been trying to say what project, if it comes forward, will we get the most use of, of the town money. Um, that was one of the reasons we backed the, uh, the, the fields in, on Fruit Street, because we felt a lot of people would get use for that, out, out of that project. So we're really trying to be conservative with the money, but it actually look and say, where's the town, what does the town want to do? What's the best interest in it and in work with work? Who will have the most use of where we're going to spend the money? So you're not opposed to CPC funds for active recreation? I've probably been the one who has been active pushing for for good uses for active. Thank you. Thank you. No, I've known Mr. Kanicki for a while, and he's been nothing but aces in my eyes. He's don't uh, volunteered a lot to the town, and I appreciate it, and uh, we're glad to potentially take you on as a continuing member of the CPC, potentially. Thank you. Yeah, I want to echo those thoughts, and, and I just know that, that, that CPC must be doing something right, because when things come up at uh, town meeting, they, they sail right through. So Sometimes yes. they don't. For, yeah. If it's a dog park, but it's a little yeah. different. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you very much. So, Chair, I'd like to say a motion. Chair, is this, uh, is this a one year term or is this a three year three. term? So, it's a three year term, not a one year term. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, I move that Mr. Kanicki be appointed to the CPT, CPC as the Board of Selectmen representative. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, it's unanimous. Thank you. Okay, what's the next letter in the alphabet? C. <laughs> As in conservation. Conservation. Is somebody here for that? Are we doing conservation? Yeah, two. Did we hear that there's somebody here interested Actually, in the conservation commission? Well, we own, we've only got, we've got one vacancy and one applicant, so. No, we have no, two. We have, two. No, there we have Carl uh, Barker Ted Barker Hook. Hook. It, Carl Barker Hook. No, no, Ted. He goes by he Ted. Goes by Ted. Okay. His goes name by is Ted. Carl. On, uh, I don't know him that well. Yeah. Yeah, he's on uh, a, a, a couple exactly. of the committees. Of okay. Um, I think he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a so who else? strong candidate. <laughs> so according to that, it's just him. Yeah. Oh, it's just him? Yeah. 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 So it was interesting. Okay. Oh, okay. Really like so. what my name is well. It didn't get, oh yeah, it didn't get, uh, I think it's because I, I think they went in order of what you picked, and your first one was Cable Advisory, then ConCom, then Sustainable Green. And we only have Ted down for this one. So we're just trying to spread some of the love. Um, but, uh, well, come on up, come on up. Come on, well, come on up. And show up for uh, no, not for it. Doesn't show up for this one. Um, but it can. But right, can it? Did she apply for it? Is it? You did apply for it. You did. It did. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. It, it's not showing up on mine. Then please. Uh, uh, Again, Samantha Dings, three wordy circle. Um, I have a degree in geography. Um, not only am I interested in volunteering for the town, but anything that can get me more involved with the human geography of the town. And I think, you know, Conservation Commission, obviously, it's, it's how the humans interact with, with the geography. And so I think I would be able to add a, add a different perspective to it than, than maybe has been there in the past. So I'd like to uh, be considered to uh, serve on it. Great. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so uh, Ted sent us a uh, note that he is, um, uh, he's, he's a baseball coach. And yeah. He's, uh, he's at a, at a uh, playoff game coaching. Okay. So. 
Uh, how do you want to? How do you want to? The best thing we should do for this one. If I if I may, I, I would like to put in a good word for uh, Ted Barker Hook. You probably know him too, Mr. Chairman, because he's been a loyal member of Zach uh, for a number of years. Ted's Ted's cut his teeth on some town boards. Um, Conservation Commission is a board that carries a lot of weight. Um, it's a very consequential board. Um, it's a board that requires a lot of time. Um, he does have a lot of commitments already, but I have already seen him in action on um, really working on some other consequential town positions. And so I, I have a good feeling for um, Ted's qualifications for town service, I, I don't mean to diminish other other candidates, but rather to speak um, positively in in favor of Mr. Barkerhook. I think he would do well in that position. But that's that's just my experience with this one individual. Okay. Anybody else have any comments? That's, uh, All set. Okay, so would you like to make a motion then? I would. I would like to um, nominate uh, Carl Barkerhook for the Conservation Commission. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, it's unanimous. Okay, so what else do we have? Okay, um, Youth Commission. Okay. All right, so. Okay, just blown off the whole alphabetical thing, right? Just. Yeah. It's okay. Just, just <laughs> we're down to Y now. CYA? Okay. So we're good. We are not CYA right now. <laughs> One, two, three, four. So we have five applicants for four vacancies. There's four Correct. vacancies? That's that. Donna Dubay is withdrawn. Oh, right. three vacancies. I took her out. Dubay so Dubay Natalie. And Don Ronan has already been appointed to the committee. She's already a member. So. Don Ronan is already on the commission. So. So okay. we have four three? for four. Respect. Can we get Margie or, or uh, Elaine and Norman to give us the overview of the committee right now? How well, we have to, I'd rather just hear from us first before we go sort out all the other. Should we have the? Folks. Do you want the? the do want, don't we? Uh, are you still the chair? Or don't, or I'm just, chair till July first. Oh. So, so I'm interested in how many people serve on the youth commission today. We have seven. I'm members. sorry, Margie. I'm asking the town. Oh, manager. sorry. Yeah. It's a sure. seven-member committee. Yes. It's a seven-member committee. Yes. How many people are on it right now? Why are you looking at her? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to fail. <laughs> okay. So yeah. the, se the yeah. seven I people. I need to make sure we're on the same page. Yeah. Right. yeah. You're not yeah. doing anything wrong, Margie. You have to just yeah. I know. a little bit here. How many people? There's seven people. How many are on it right now? They are uh, six people on the committee, uh, though Jean, Raymond, Ryman. and Margie. Amanda Fargiano is also yes. going off. Oh, okay. Okay. So who wants to stay on the committee? Staying on the committee are Tamoria Seba, who will be chair as of July 1st. Um, Phil Powers. John, well, he's a liaison. John Savignano, Don Ronan, who was appointed in the spring, and Christina Anderson. So we have four staying on. We have three vacancies. To my knowledge, we have three applicants which are Natalie Langlois, who is here, yeah. Keisha Vaughn, who is here, and Heather Strother, who has a very sick 14-year-old dog, was on the way, and the dog wasn't moving, so she oh. has. Oh, but she sent awesome. me a whole description of why she would be a good candidate. And okay. I what know. about Brenda Rea? Yeah. Uh, Brenda Rea, is, is she a new applicant? Because I didn't know of that one. I don't know if she's new or not, but she's on. I didn't, I wasn't yeah. sent that. I believe she applied. Okay, she'd yeah. be great, too. Okay, I have, uh, I have a question, too. To the chair myself <laughs> um, so if you've already voted a new chair but it starts as of July 1 Can, and that, that she Tamori was only with us for a f five months maybe I've been oh, with okay. that commission for no okay I was just I was just years. okay that, that was just yeah, all right that, that just part, part confuses me because normally when you reorganize reorganize a committee it's reorganized no, we're not reorganizing. We just have three people going off. 
and we have three vacancies, so we're bringing on three people. So then how was Tamoria already? Because we have an annual vote is part of our goals and responsibilities and roles where we have an annual vote as to chair, vice chair, secretary. And because I'm going off the commission as of July 1, we voted, I suggested Tamoria be chair, and uh, the commission voted her as chair. But she's not chair until July 1. But if, if, if I may, but is, doesn't the new board, shouldn't the new board pick who the chair is? That's not how it works. You guys are picking uh, the, the new, no. the, board, the existing board. No, our, I'll read you what we have in our, this has been, this has been okay. this way for a long time. Um, chair, the Youth Commission Chair is elected annual by YC members, um, and it, that's as of July 1. So the, the new year begins July 1. Right, so July 2, or the, that's when a vote of the new board, board you know, it's, it's just like I couldn't have been voted chair if I weren't re-elected. Oh, so you're saying the new board should have vote her. Right, because. Instead of we voting. Okay, right, or that's if you fine. want to step down and then. Okay, so I'm not step down yet then. I'm still chair till July Oh, okay, one. then. Yeah, so the new board, you're saying the new board should vote in September as to who the chair is. Or okay. whenever the first meeting is, yep. whenever September you're supposed 12. to do that. Okay, I apologize. Yeah, because, I get it. Okay. Thank you. Oh, that's why I was just confused. I'm sorry. Because I, 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 was I, I, too. I had heard tomorrow was chair, and then, nope, but then you were like, okay, nope. I don't know if you're open. Okay. Nope. I'm in there till then. All right, so now we have four people for three positions. Yes. yes. Okay, are any of the people here yes. for those positions? They are. Okay. And do you want me to read Heather Strother's information first that she sent me about the one whose dog is not doing well? Sure. Okay, since I'm already sick. Yeah. Okay. So Heather Strother is someone that I know. Um, her, she's interested in doing this position. Um, I'll just read you what she said. So speaking for her, um, she, okay, I, she works at the Mass Department of Mental Health in Children's Mental Health Policy. She oversees a program on child psychiatry consultation to pediatricians. Through this role, I, have, I also have knowledge about a lot of resources for youth with mental health issues. Second, as a parent of a child with special needs on an IEP, I bring firsthand knowledge of challenges youth can have with social activities. I would like to help work on ways to integrate youth with special needs into the community better in Hopkinton. And this is someone that I know personally. I know her son. He's a great kid. Um, he is on IEP, so she's one of our applicants. Okay. Hey, Keisha. Good evening. Thank you. Um, I'm Keisha Vaughn. I live here in Hopkinton, Seven Hazel Road. Um, I've been a resident for six years, live with my husband, and I have three children, ages 11, 9, and 8. I'm currently a stay-at-home mom to those kids, um, but I'm also a pediatrician, um, so that's my background. I've been an advocate, um, and my passion has been for children and adolescents, obviously, for years um, on the, in the medical side of things. But um, as a member of the community and having children growing up in this community, um, that's what piqued my interest in joining the Youth Commission. Any, any questions? So you're a pediatrician, but you're a stay-at-home mom, so you're... Currently, yeah. Kind of on a hiatus. She's a practicing pediatrician. Yep. pediatrician. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything was right? And, and no, but even you know, before you came forward, just reading over, I, I think we're very we're very fortunate yes. to have you know these two people, both Keisha and uh, Heather, yeah. that actually have professional uh, qualifications in in youth and child related. Um, sometimes it's just wonderful to have just good-hearted citizens that want to volunteer, and they make wonderful volunteers. But when you get that level of professionalism beside behind it, um, I think we're very lucky. So uh, I'm delighted, and thank you thank for you so for volunteering. Okay. Thank you. We're okay, richer so to have you. So who else do we have here? Oh, come on up. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Natalie Langua. I live at 7 Jackson Street. Um, I have lived in Hopkinton for four years next month. I have um, two sons, a four-year-old 
and a one-year-old, both boys. Um, so I volunteered for the Youth Commission um, just as an interested young parent with my older son hopefully going to be entering the new school when he joined in kindergarten in fall of 2018 or whatever school is, is working at that time. Um, and just looking to get more involved in the community. Um, a bit about my background, I'm a um, business litigation attorney. I've been practicing for the last 10 years, um, graduated from Boston College Law School. Um, but I work from home, so I'm in Hockington a lot and um, hoping to devote more of my hours to volunteering and getting involved with um, the community and our kids. Thank you. Anything? Any questions? No, I don't. This is, this is great. What an amazing qualified, qualified yeah, group of people we have for this. Yeah. You sure you want to leave? It's a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a I, I, strong I want boy. New, I want families with younger children to come in. My daughter's in high school. So. I don't know if you're allowed to say that. I, so like I, good good <laughs> <laughs> I would like to make a motion, Mr. Chairman. Absolutely. To oh, wait, wait, do we have a, is there, I don't, don't have think Brenda people? is here. The fourth person is not here. Okay, then, then, then that's, right. that's usually the way we like to do it. Okay. I think these are great applicants, and I would like to nominate Natalie Langlois, Keisha Vaughn, and Heather Strother to join the Youth Commission. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none. So, oh, oh, sorry. Yes. All right. I told you this wasn't going to be easy. Um, at least it's not easy for me. Yes. Are we ex not excluding, but is, is there an applicant for these positions that's not going to get on in because of Mrs. Wright's motion? I'm still a little confused about openings and applicants for this particular body. There is one applicant, Brenda Rea, who was, was not here, and her application doesn't really list her qualifications, so it's very hard to That's judge. not the one that Margie spoke no. to? No. No. Okay. Got it. No. Okay. no, Heather. Heather, who is the, um, has a in mass child psychology. And there's three openings background. on this committee. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Unanimous. Great. Thank you. Okay. Great. That was, a, that was a good one. Okay. What else we have? We're still doing our shuffle. We we'll go back to the Baraton Fund Committee. Okay. M. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll go to M. <laughs> Good evening. I'm Colleen Charleston. I live at 1 Westfield Road. I'm an incumbent. I've been on the Marathon Fund Committee, f I think, since 2008. Um, and I just want to throw in a word. Carol Nathan has also been, and she had to work late tonight. Um, I think it's a great committee. It's, I think it's the only one that actually, you know, gives funding away to worthy groups. Um, uh, I, I think I've done a great job keeping things organized, hopefully spending the money, um, which is, you know, what we're supposed to be doing. So I, I want to continue doing it, and I know we, for whatever reason, it's only one-year terms, which maybe that should be thought about changing that a yeah. little bit in the future. But um, And I know Carol really enjoys it, too. And then the other members are appointed from different town committees, so there's only two at-large appointments. So I would, and I know Carol would also love to do it again. Excellent. Yo, you were on the consent uh, agenda. That's for some money. Okay. Um, yes. Yes. The, oh, beautiful. There's a member of the public who's expressed an interest, Chuck Wallace. Wallace. Good evening. I want to thank you for inviting me here and the consideration on my uh, application. Uh, as you know, I have a little experience uh, with the marathon <laughs> as the uh, coordinator of public safety for the last 15 years of the town of Hopkinton. Uh, I also prepared the budgets and uh, authorized payments uh, for the marathon. Um, I, I will make this uh, very short and sweet. I know you have a very uh, lengthy agenda tonight. Um, I would, uh, I, I would uh, I withdraw, respectfully withdraw my application uh, because it's my understanding the three current members uh, on the board are looking for a reappointment. It is not my position to uh, upset the uh, great work they do. Uh, so I would uh, respectfully uh, withdraw my application for future consideration when there is a, uh, an available spot. 
Well, Chuck, can we get you to volunteer for something else? Uh, <laughs> well, well I, 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 as you know, my love is the marathon, so uh, I'm on the marathon committee, and that's why I wanted to uh, assist on the fun committee as well. But again, uh, they do a great job, and I'm not going to uh, upset the great job they do. So hopefully in years to come, there will be a uh, available position, and uh, I, I could uh, apply at that time. Thanks so much. So, thank you run for the marathon. I've seen you in action. You're fast. You've caught me. Oh, yeah. I've caught you a lot, but we won't go into that. <laughs> thank you very much. Nice, oh, Chuck. Okay. All right, with that. So I'd still like to get an overview of this one. Absolutely. From what do we have? <coughs> how many, how many open, what are the terms? It's, it's a five-member board. They're all one-year terms. Um, the, just, just to clarify, you see Mr. John, John Graziano as a member, he listed, uh, represents the, the school committee on the board. That's the only one. And they <coughs> represent us. So there's three open members, Carol Nathan, John Graziano, Carling Charleston no. are all? No, John, John's a uh, school oh, committee okay. liaison. Right, that's why, I stopped. Like that's why I stopped looking at that. That was too confusing. Okay, so we have we have two for two. So the chair will entertain a motion to reappoint uh, the incumbent. Yeah, the, 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 the incumbents. Yeah, Chair Nathan, yeah. Jonathan Graziano, and Colin Charleston. Second. Okay. But Did you say Carol? Yeah. It's Carol and, and me right. are the at large. In John is appointed through the school committee. Yes. Does he have to be reappointed? To, but that means I, I have to be reappointed at the same yes. time also. Yes. So then, I We've been through this before. Okay. They nominate, you appoint. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, right. but I'm, we're, we're, I am still confused. There are five members in this committee. Carol, Colleen, John, who else? Dan Terry. Mary Joe, the friend. Dan Terry. Who and represent Parks and Rec and yeah. um, the Marathon Committee. Yeah. So they're a school committee, Marathon Committee, Parks and Rec are appointed, and then two at large that you guys appoint. And this is for the two at large. So is this for the two at large positions? Yes. And it matters the Parks and Rec Commission met last week and did liaison assignments, and Amy Markovich is going to be the representative. Okay, and, and and I think next time we do this, we have to put away more time for this. Yeah. There was, there was only yeah. thirty minutes put away for this, um, and, and let's cut it in half at least. Mr. Chair, I nominate or I move move that we reappoint Colleen and Carol to the Marathon Fund Committee. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thanks. Got it? Okay. Let's get this one. Uh, what's the next? Still got uh, Mr. Hamilton out there. we got to get him. Mr. Chair, yes. it is important that we reset each committee before we get into the number of people and so on. We're, we're getting, I'm getting confused because we're having there lots of input, but we don't, have, we don't start with the basics. We need to start right. with the basics that, and then get into the details. It, it, uh, Mr. Kamal, there's any way that we can table the rest of any of these until I well, next meeting, so we might be able to get more organized. Almost, almost done. Okay. Just well, can make we sure. at least start? We've got permanent building committee, affordable housing committee, and then we got the whole shoot and match of the others. But uh, if we could just get the basic overview, it helps us set the table appropriately, so we can figure it out. If it takes a minute to do that, pull it up on the screen. Fine, let's take a minute. Okay. The permanent building committee has five members. Currently, um, they, there are four field positions by Dan McIntyre, David Godfrey, Michael DiMasio, and Mark Gates. So there's one opening. Yes. And there's one applicant. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also, uh, Mr. McIntyre's term is expiring. Okay. Does he want to be reappointed? Yes. Okay. 
He is here to stay. This <laughs> Thanks for speaking for me, Lawrence. Yeah. <laughs> and who's the other applicant? Rob Scott. Yeah. He's here. Okay. Okay. We got to get this one better, better for next year. Mm -hmm. uh, Rob Scott, 28 Fruit Street. Uh, just a local contractor, business owner, bought interest in town, lived here my entire life, and just wanted to get into volunteering for this stuff. And I thought this was a really good spot for me to, to jump into. You know, I have mm -hmm. a lot of knowledge in this field and thought I'd be a good fit for it. So. Okay. Any questions, Mr. Tinsdorf? Well, I've known Mr. Scott for a while, and I will tell you that his track record is is very, very strong. He's turned a smaller business into a very large business. He's very active in the community. Um, he is someone that is trying to get into into the town politics and, and doing some volunteering. And uh, I'm happy to put my uh, my vote of approval on Mr. Scott. I've known him for a long time. I'll, I'll speak for his character and for his enthusiasm. Excellent. All right, thank you. I think uh, Dan McIntyre, Chairman of the Building Committee, I think Mr. Scott will make a great addition to the uh, committee and uh, I appreciate your appointment. They're catching your best side on the TV. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, Dan. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, as soon as I saw his qualifications, I thought he'd be a great he'd be a great yeah. contributor. But so this I'm is doing a, Dan's vouching for Mr. Scott under the assumption that Dan's going to come back. Hey, right? Exactly. I was just going to ask him about that. So yeah. So I, you're supposed to be up there, you know, speaking for yourself. <laughs> Sit down, Mr. <this> Scott. <laughs> so your qualifications for this? <laughs> I'd be happy to be reappointed to the building. Great. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Mr. Chair, I move that we reappoint Dan McIntyre and, and Mr. Scott to the Permanent Building Committee. Second. Right. Okay, any further discussion? No. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's unanimous. Thanks so much, you guys. Okay, Mr. Camalo. Okay, the Permanent yes. Building. So affordable housing is next. Yeah, there was a question regarding the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Right. I think. Right. The, yeah. Um, my name is Beth Malloy, 190 Lumber Street. Wait, 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 Beth, Beth, he was just clarifying something first. Okay. He was just, uh, he was going to bring us up to speed on what, what was going on okay. with the committee first. And we'll get right to you, thanks. Yes. Um, I believe there is one vacancy. Uh, this is a, do you mind bringing it up? Yeah, it is a it is a five member board uh, with a representative from the selectmen. Um, currently, Todd Sestari is the selectmen's representative. The other members are Mary Ann Chambers, Beth Malloy, and Aman Hydri. Okay. And I believe your question was on the charge of the committee. Uh, the purpose of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund is to provide for the creation and preservation of affordable housing mm -hmm. in town for the benefit of low and moderate income households. Uh, I believe for the most part over the past years, the effort of the fund has been in building up its balance. Uh, and I believe they, we have not had any expenditures from that fund. Um. That's, I, I'm up for reappointment, and I'd like to change that. I'd like to see us actually use some of these funds for families in our town and see what we can do. I think the only meeting I've ever attended for this committee, Claire came um, as through the Historical Society, was it the Toll the House? Or? Commission for yeah. the Toll so House. Yeah, so I guess I'd like to um, see this be a little bit more active, the committee. And if they've been building up the money, maybe we can see where we could best use it in the town. Yes, uh, and, and I can tell you that uh, the opportunities um, abound. Uh, we have had recent inquiries regarding buying down some of the affordable housing units that are on sale, and we'll be forwarding those requests to the committee, uh, to, to the fund, sorry, uh, to the trust fund okay. uh, for consideration. All right. Can you so, for anything else? I have a question. Sure. How often do you guys meet? 
Um, I've had one meeting in all the years that I've been on it, and I think it's been five years. Yeah, so that's kind of troubling. Like It is troubling, and that's know. why I came to try to specify yeah. and, and get things moving a little bit. Because I know when, uh, during that last election process, I was trying to find, I was doing some reading on some people that were running for certain offices, and I couldn't find any minutes for it, and it kind of popped into my head and said, I'd like to know why, like if you're meeting monthly, or bi-monthly, or whatever, why there are no minutes. But if you've met once in five years, um, it explains it. <laughs> yeah, how long are the appointments for? Uh, be some type yes. of oversight for this. Exactly. Initially, they were uh, stuck at terms uh, one and two year terms. Yes. Then this so. will be my third time being reappointed. <clears throat> um, there was a committee, uh, a chair, um, who very rarely ever called us together. Who was that chair? Do I have to say? No. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to say anything. I'd rather not. Okay. Do you know who it is? No. I do. Yeah. I don't know why. I mean, it's a yeah. Problem. So if we're, uh, uh, um, that's I'm just confused that 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 we're appointing to a board, uh, we keep reappointing to a, a board that never meets. Mm -hmm. So this is so, the third so time. We, so we, 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 we uh, the board. right? Are we appointing the wrong people? I think we need a different chair. Well, that's something that the board does. The the committees do themselves. Okay. Is, uh, is appoint their own chairs. Um, because it, it, it's, it's really troubling that that, um, that means that we've appointed three-year terms? Two-year terms. Two-year terms. So that means that uh, in the past... Uh, uh, so this is the third time that you've been appointed and you haven't had a meeting? One. With Claire. Yeah. So, so one in four so years. So systemically there's a problem there. Yeah. And we have to figure, I mean, it's a big problem. That so especially where, where you guys are. How many spots are open right now? One. One. Seems to me there's five open spots. Yeah. Yeah. Because if we have a board that has five people on it, correct, and we name some people that currently serve on the board, but we haven't had a meeting in five years, so we've had one just to figure out why we aren't having a meeting, it seems to me that it's just not getting done. So we only get to a point one, correct? Yes. Okay. So I think we need to reach out to the other appointing authorities and let them know that, you know, it would be nice if we could, everybody could speak to their appointed individual and let them know that we'd like to get this going. I mean, think about it. The cost of housing in Hopkinton is skyrocketing. And there are people in need, and we have funds available to help these people. This is... This is a sin that we're not getting this done. And I don't blame you. No, I, blame I agree with us. you 100%. That's why I'm here. I blame the town for not me being one of them, for not being on top of this and fixing this. So shame on, on me and all of us, the new members, not your problem, but we should fix this. I agree. So uh, if those other four members don't want to serve on the board, we need to know that. And we can call joint meetings with those other bodies, and we can appoint other people. So let's right. let's fix it's this. It's not just up to the chair to call a meeting. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, if you have a meeting and the chair can't show up, the vice chair should be running the meeting. I don't know if there is one. I would like to add, too, or recommend that in the future, um, even if a committee doesn't meet, that there should be a report in the annual report to the townspeople so they understand about the committee. Maybe if people know it's out there, they would A, be interested, or they might come up with initiatives that could be funded through the Affordable Housing Task Force. But I know um, I, too, looked through multiple annual reports going back, I don't know how many years, um, and there wasn't even a committee report. Um, so it, it's got an unnecessarily low profile in the town, which I think we should find ways to elevate that, and maybe we can actually, you know, make some use of those funds if, if uh, it has more active presence. I'd love to see that done. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, I would like to nominate Beth for reappointment, and uh, hope that this con that this uh, discussion um, so will, will stimulate some action now. Yeah, a catalyst. It's been yeah. brought to everybody's attention. Um, 
But, but, oh. to, but to Mr. If I may, to, to Mr. Hurst's point, let's see if we can uh, reach out to the to the other uh, committees <coughs> and boards for their liaisons and make sure that uh, that they're not happy with the meeting schedules there. Okay, sorry, Mr. Tessa. I'll second it. Okay, now any further discussion? I thought we should have waited. Okay, hearing that, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you, Beth, for stepping up. Okay, um, what's next? I think we've gone through the list. Brian, do you still have anything on your list? I think we've gone through the list. The list that we put together at the beginning? Yes, of committees um, that we felt needed to be discussed. And now what's remaining is the remainder of the list, including also town council as well as uh, special labor council and the town manager appointments. Okay, but one of those that not the, but, uh, one of the things that worries me is that is is there another committee on there like this affordable housing committee that could be falling through the cracks that we're just we're going to do a blanket of, uh, uh, approval because there are two for two spots or three for three spots and um, there might be another one that's that's just not meeting and we don't know about it because we're doing it like this. Yeah. I wouldn't say. I won't use the phrase that is falling through the cracks. I've been in the town for seven years. I have at least worked with some member or some representative of the committee on at least three projects in town. Whether they've met or haven't met, I think is an issue that needs to be discussed, yes. Okay. Yeah. Great, thank you. But, so I can appreciate that, but if you break numbers wise, if you break it down, that's one project every 2.3 years. So yeah. that's not impressive. So I'd say falling through the cracks. Maybe not falling through the cracks, but definitely dormant. I would say this committee is dormant. And if there are any other committees like this, I'd like to know about it so we can um, change that around and maybe get some new committee members on it or uh, fire them up to be a little bit more aggressive and do their job. Well, if there's, or if there's a, um, a committee that hasn't uh, put in minutes for at least a year, let's find out. Uh, I don't want situation. this to be a resume builder if you're not doing anything. Okay. All right, with that, uh, uh, Mr. Kamala, could you uh, present the, uh, these, the next ones to us? Ben, I, I think the suggestion is that if, if the board is willing to move a motion to uh, make the appointments that are listed in the memo that was uh, distributed to the board uh, in your packet, uh, minus the ones that have been added on. But what are the other key appointments, Mr. Kamal? beyond the committees, there's the town council. There's the town council, uh, there's the special town council, and then there are the town manager appointments. Uh, pay shout out to the town manager appointments don't take effect until they are ratified by the board. Uh, these include the plumbing and gas inspector, mm -hmm. the assistant plumbing and gas inspector, the assistant plumbing and gas inspector, the second one, wiring inspector, person to cut wire in case of any fire, assistant wiring inspector, we have two of those, and then we also have a mutual aid building inspector in the event that uh, we need assistance, we always call upon this individual. Uh, Sealer of weights and measures, public wear, we have three. Uh, in fact, we have, sorry, five, no, six. Wow, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that's great. Uh, and then there's the field inspector as well as the parking clerk, Jerry Holland. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to reappoint uh, all committee members uh, across uh, the appointed committees for the community uh, that currently serve on those committees uh, as presented in the handout this evening to the Board of Selectmen, minus those committees we handled individually, minus the Town Council. I'll second that. Okay. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Ms. Wright, do you have anything? No. Okay. Is that some? No, I'm good. Okay. Okay. With that, uh, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That's unanimous. Okay. So we broke out the uh, town council. Mr. Chair, I just wanted to break out the town council. Um, I've worked with Mr. Mieres, uh really since I got elected to the Board of Selectmen 
10 years ago or so now. Um, he, uh, he replaced Larry Feynman, who had been a town council for many years in Hopkinton. Uh, we went through an extensive search process uh, when we and settled on the areas in Harrington. Uh, I think they've done an excellent job for the community. I haven't always agreed with him on everything, but he's a very uh, knowledgeable uh, municipal law attorney, as is his firm. Um, and uh, I think it would make sense to reappoint town council, but I think it's an important one to break out because it's not an inexpensive appointment. Um, we have a, I think, very competitive agreement in place with town council. Uh, he is not paid by the hour, like a lot of town councils in Massachusetts are, or some, I should say, in Massachusetts are. Uh, we have an annual uh, retainer, I guess is the word to use, uh, but that retainer doesn't include a bunch of overages if you know, it goes over a certain number of hours or anything like that. Uh, he's here late at night with us, and uh, Mr. Chair, you'll find that you'll have a lot of discussions with him in the next year <laughs> as the chair. Already oh, yeah. have. And um, you'll find his counsel, I think, to be very uh, <laughs> important and worthwhile. So thank you, Mr. Chair. So with that, I would move that we reappoint Mary's and Harrington to serve as town council uh, for the town of Hopkinton for FY18. So yeah. I'd also be interested in hearing Mr. Kamala's That's opinion. That's where I was going before we vote. I echo everything that uh, Mr. Hay has said. Um, it's great working with uh, Ray. Um, what I find even most impressive about him is uh, he's very accessible. Whenever we need him, we're able to get hold of him. Thank you. Excellent. Any further discussion? No. Yep. Okay, with that, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That's unanimous. Okay. S sorry, Mr. Chair. Mr. Yes. Hay. In pulling out town council, should we assume that special labor council was in included in the original vote? That is correct. Okay. I only wanted to talk about town council in particular. So that was in my original motion. If it wasn't understood that way, I'm happy to do that. But what do you want to? Let's just special let's label Nick. Yes, I said. So would you want to? Let's then, then just just to be clear, let's just uh, let's just take a let's um, challenge and motion to uh, reappoint Nick. Just to keep it, keep some clarity. So I'll reappoint Nick to serve as special special labor counsel to the town of Hopkinton for FY18. Second. To, to include Nick's last name in that, or can it be it's, any Nick? It's, <laughs> 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 it's Miracle O'Connor. The name of the firm is Miracle O'Connor. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Nick okay. Miracle. <laughs> <laughs> any, yes. any further discussion? Okay. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I just want to do it for clarification. Nick does a great job, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, are we going to um, bond uh, anticipation? Um, yes. May I just mention, I, we're always so glad when people volunteer, and I know um, Mr. Hamilton came forth, and I think he has some great skills to bring. Um, looking through these lists, it, it still seems like there might be some vacancies coming on different boards. Um, so I would like to, even though I don't think there's anything that's fit into a, a slot we were discussing tonight, I, I would like to keep a dialogue going with him as to his qualifications and what things might be coming up uh, and, and find a, a space for that um, that great volunteer over there who wants to serve. We don't want to, we don't want to lose him. I'll actually take it one, one step further. If if you could have somebody from town hall that we're going to contact touch. them and, and tell them what's what we have yeah, coming open up. and see if there's anything we'll like that might interest them. Yeah. Mr. Kamalo, were there any committees on here that didn't that that we didn't that we after tonight still have openings on? Vacancies? Yes. yes. Yeah, there's one right, right yeah, at the top AD, the ADA Oversight Committee. And the appointment to the historical John Pavkov. Can we read out real quick the committees that have a vacancy and see if Mr. Hamilton has an interest? So why would we wait? I mean, they're already here and he's here. I know this historical commission we'll, we Mr. have. Mr. Hamilton, we we'll read them out. You raise your hand if you want. <laughs> may, may I ask about the historical commission, though? Mr. Pavlov has applied, okay. and we did not. He was, he was voted in the omnibus yes. appointment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because I still think there are some openings. Yeah. There's the Cultural Council. 
Well, I'm just looking at ADA oversight. It looks like there's an opening. And yeah. then there's, there is another one on Affordable Housing Trust Fund. <laughs> well, that's um, not a good place to start. Yeah, Tax Relief Committee, three references. Oh, sorry, board, three vacancies. Board of Registrar of Voters. Oh, it's yeah. rolling on? Okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we could call him tomorrow yeah, okay. and yeah. just walk him through. Yeah. Yes. And see if he'd like to apply for something we can appoint at the next meeting. Yes. Okay. Actually, thank you of the Appropriations Committee. Yeah. Mr. Yes. Chair, I'll bet one of Mr. Ted Stone's starbursts that within two weeks, if not a month, because the summertime is when we get some resignations, we'll have additional resignations on some key committees in town, mm -hmm. Mr. Hamilton. So. Guarantee you, you'll get some meaningful work here in the next couple of months. Okay. So please stay tuned and keep keep in touch with Mr. Kamal and Mrs. Lazarus. For the record, I don't bet. <laughs> Who gets the starburst? <laughs> yeah, and I'd just like to thank everybody for stepping up. Absolutely. It really is. It's it's wonderful that we have uh, such talented people stepping up for all these positions. It's uh, it's great Mr. to volunteer Feynman. for the town. It really does a lot. You, you feel great doing it. And oh, I know that I do. And so I want to thank everybody for coming. Thank you for doing it. All right, so now, Mr. Kamalo, could you uh, lead us into the uh, bond anticipation note? Yes, uh, and with your permission, Mr. Chair, we have Michael Connolly, the town's treasurer, uh, present here with us, um, accompanied by the CFO, uh, Chris Sandil. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Mr. Town Manager, Mr. Lazarus, I'm Mike Connolly, town treasurer. Um, I'm here just to, uh, this is a bond anticipation note, it's a renewal. It was originally authorized back in uh, the town meeting in 2013 for the, uh, the uh, financial software that the town purchased. And then each year we've been coming back and rolling it over, paying down 100000 and rolling over 100000 Now we're at the point where um, we're going to be paying down 100000 and then borrowing another 100000 and then next year we'll pay it off. So it's a, it's a bond anticipation note, which will never be bonded. <coughs> okay. Uh, any <coughs> questions on this one? I'm just trying to get to yours. I feel bad that these guys have been here all night. <laughs> We've worked yeah. through the appointments, but this is a pretty straightforward process, and so we appreciate you guys getting it done for us. Um, Okay, uh, so the chair will entertain a motion to uh, approve the uh, bond uh, renewal action in the amount of $100,000. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, it passes. Okay, 192 Hayden Road. Thanks, guys. Oh, sorry, thank, thank, you. You. thank you, guys. Thank you for coming. Thanks for waiting. Thanks for your patience. Okay, 192 Hayden Road planning process, working group report. So we have anybody here to uh, bring us up to speed on the uh, dog park? Uh. The, the, yes, Ms. Yeah. Mr. Chair, Elaine Lazarus will walk us through the wonderful work that this group has accomplished. So about a month ago, uh, just a reminder, you had appointed a, a short-term group to uh, figure out where on this property that the town now owns the dog park and trails and other uses would go. And so um, uh, Dan Terry representing Parks and Rec, Nancy Peters representing Open Space Preservation Commission, and Jane Moran representing Upper Charles Trail yeah. Committee, and I got together on two occasions and worked with uh, a lot of several other people who attended the meetings to come up with a plan which we presented to you, uh, both a memo and a plan, that shows a dog park location within which that dog park would be located, um, a parking area off of Hayden Row, uh, an area set aside for trails that can get around the dog park and with enough land to make sure that there's enough space for grading and, and other uses, a uh, community garden area, um, and a potential uh, handicapped parking area off the end of Deer Run should it be needed uh, because of grading issues. It's on the same grade as the dog park. It's felt that probably won't need that, but in the unlikely event that we would, there is an area for accessible parking should we need it, and access to the dog park from that location. So in a nutshell, that's um, what the group 
came up with and is presented with you, presented to you this evening. Uh, in addition, a second vote asking you to begin to look into a rec recreation restriction on the dog park and associated area. We're all familiar with conservation restrictions. This is something new for us, and they uh, feel it's time to get started to anticipate that and look into it right now. Okay, great. I just have to um, put a hold on that thought for a minute and reopen the uh, public hearing for water and sewer rates. And um, and then we'll, uh, so we shall entertain a motion to reopen the public hearing for water and sewer rates. So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 So and I'll entertain a motion to take a hiatus from the water and sewer rates and go back to, uh, is, that, is that in order, Mr. Kamala? Or do we have to continue it? Can we finish up the uh, dog park? Yes, we can finish up the dog park. Oh, okay, great. So, Chair, I a motion to uh, uh, hold off on that until we finish up the uh, oh, dog park. So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Aye. so, Ms. Lazarus, now we're, we're open. So, you see the plan um, that mm -hmm. we've presented. Um, it's pretty similar to the one that you've seen before. Um, it does show uh, an expanded area for the dark park, but it's easily identifiable on the ground and surveyable. <coughs> um, and it feels as though, people feel as though that's enough room for, for all of those uses there in that front of that property. Looks great. And the two meetings that were held were public meetings. They were posted and there were be minutes generated. Uh, all right. Um, Anybody have any questions for Ms. Lazarus? Mr. Chair, was there any dissension amongst the group specific to these final layouts? There were unanimous votes. Unanimous votes. Did anyone attend the public meetings? Yes, several people attended. Um, was there any dissension amongst the attendees? There wasn't dissension. There was a lot of discussion about what the uses would be, um, but there was pretty much consensus on what the uses were going to be, and in general where they were going to be. It was just a matter of how they were all going to together. So. Okay. But, uh, Nancy and Dan are both here as well. Do you guys want to? <laughs> okay. Beautiful. Okay. With that. Uh, it, it turns out there's plenty of room for everything. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, with that, the chair will entertain a motion to, um, uh, let's see, what, what, the, um, what, what is the motion we have to make on this? Uh, other than disbanding the working group. That's it. So, Mr. Chair, I move that the board accept the recommendations from the 192 Hayden Road Planning Process Working Group relative to the location of trails in a dog park uh, at 192 Hayden Row. I also, uh, in my motion, move that the board consider disbanding the working group as its mission has been completed. There was a second. Second. Any further discussion? Excellent. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. Thank you very much for doing it such a fast job. The, the second motion is one that I think that uh, some action needs to be taken. What, disbanding the... The no, no the, um, this, there's going to be a need for right now, a recreation restriction. But, uh, Dave Goldman from from HALP was there, and for the conservation restriction, he feels as his recommendation, and it seems to make sense, is that there's two restrictions on the property, a conservation restriction and a recreation restriction. He feels as though HALP would not be interested in managing both. So we need to start the process of defining a um, recreation restriction and looking for a group to manage that restriction. Mr. Chair, I move that the Board of Selectmen direct Town Council and Town Manager to begin the process to establish a recreation restriction for the property located at 192 Hayden Road Street. If they could work on behalf, uh, if they could work along with Parks and Rec uh, on the recreation restriction, that I think would be uh, a good idea. Working in conjunction with the Parks and Rex Department. Yeah. Okay. Nancy. Conservation Conservation. 
think it also should be called No, the conservation restriction will come from HALT. That's a separate matter that's already, there's a process in place for conservation restrictions. Okay. Yeah. So I think Nancy's so talking about open survey. space. We'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's going to happen regardless. So my motion is specific to the recreation <coughs> restriction in town because this is all new to me. I've never oh, heard yeah. of it. Okay, so that's why I want town council and town manager to figure it out, come back to us, but work with Parks and Rec to make sure that we've got their concerns as part of this process. So do we know if that's the type of thing that well, Parks we're doing, and Rec Let's get, get, get a second for us. Second. Second. Okay. Further discussion. Yeah. This is all new to us. Do we know if Parks and Rec could hold a recreation? I mean, with conservation things, there's a number of conservation groups available to us, but does anybody know? That's what I think that's that's My I think understanding is, is restrictions can't be held by, uh, by the, by the enforcement. Right, I think that that's why you were saying that we have, we have to go to town council to figure out. Uh, so we, we need, a, and Parks and Rec is, is it, it intends to, to work on this as well yeah. it's just that some of the legal work that Brian described in this motion yeah. I think is is going to be required um, but uh, I, I think we will need to identify potentially identify a new group such as the friends of the Hopkinton dog park or, or something along mm -hmm. those lines that would actually manage that conservation mm -hmm. restriction hmm. I mean recreation restriction new territory okay. any further discussion I have none. Okay. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, let's get back to uh, water and sewer rates. I'm going to set the water and sewer rates for FY18. Gentlemen, come on back up. Thanks. I believe at our last meeting we gave you guys a charge to. Uh, come up with uh, some new numbers that actually went the other direction. Instead of uh, zero plus one plus two, we we're looking at uh, getting us at that 25%. In, in fact, Ms. Chair, as you're setting up, um, included in your packet, in fact, is the answer to that question. Mm -hmm. uh, the consultants provided several options. Um, for your consideration. The second piece I wanted to clarify, and this is mainly for, for public consumption. Um, there were numer numerous references at the last meeting to a windfall. Uh, I just want to clarify to the public that that's, that's actually this normal. Uh, it was a windfall strictly in the sense of the timing, i.e. the developer decided to pay uh, earlier rather than later. Mm -hmm. um, we mm -hmm. are pretty firm as a town that our fees uh, reflect the service that we, we, we provide. Uh, and I wanted, to, I wanted the public to, to understand that the reference to windfall was simply limited to the timing mm -hmm. of the payment, not necessarily the, mm -hmm. um, the, the value of the fee that was paid to the town. Okay. Good evening. So t as a refresher, even though it was just mentioned a moment ago, we've met with you recently over the last few weeks, presented a few options for water and sewer. We were asked to run some additional scenarios and present additional options, which we have done and provided to you already. And we're going to discuss those tonight as well. And also we'll just have some quick commentary um, in addition to that along the lines of um, what Mr. Kamala just said for the, around the connection fee. So the way that we're presenting this this evening is are some quick comments about water and then the options that you've seen about water. And we'll discuss water and then we'll do the same for sewer. So up on the screen is a slide about water in the latest analysis on water. What the table represents is the baseline or the do nothing scenario. You've seen these numbers before, but we wanted to make sure we showed them again tonight. The, all the scenarios that we've run include all the items in the comprehensive capital plan that was presented to us by the Department of Public Works. Certified retained earnings for water were certified at just over or almost $1.4 million. And the level of retained earnings is strong because of the one time payment on the connection fees, which was over $1.1 million in FY16. 
and the town had anticipated that it would that that payment wouldn't happen in one year; that it would happen over two years. But it happened in one year. And also, in addition to that, the connection fees that were paid in FY16, included in our analysis, we've taken a look at uh, what connections are anticipated over the next several years. And because of the activity that's going on with Legacy Farms, particularly what's planned in Legacy North, the town will uh, can anticipate an additional amount of connection fee revenue over the next few years. And we're looking at over $800,000 from FY19 through 21. Whereas in a typical year, that would be one without a lot of construction going on, new development going on, uh, the connection fee revenue is usually around 100000 or less. So there's definitely a lot of activity with connection fees going on in town right now. And we took a look at um, the connection fee itself and, and what went into that. And uh, we saw that less than 50% of the minority of the revenue is meant to fund existing expenses for existing users whereas the majority, or more than 50%, is intended to fund capital improvements. So we want to keep that in mind as we review all this as well. So you've seen three options before. This slide should look familiar to you, except we've added a graph. Um, and on each of the graphs, we put um, the, the rates that we're using for the option, in blue over the five-year period where and the retained earnings projections in red over the five-year period. Those colors are the same on each slide. So this is a, a representation of the baseline scenario, which was the original option one. Here's your original option two, presented just a little bit differently to, to make sure we got everything to fit on here. So the top table has the rate changes on the top row, which is 1% in each of the five years. The retained earnings, pro oh, my apologies there. The retained earnings projections over the five-year period and the percentages when compared to the operating budget. The middle table on the left are just um, a sample of users that we've been focused on to show the impact on their bills and the usage tied to each of those users. Their current bill is listed there and down on the bottom table are the projections for their new bill and these are yearly numbers, yearly numbers. So with 1% increase, we're looking at about 50, um, for average residential user, you're looking at about $2 difference in a yearly basis in one year. Same presentation for the original option three, which is a 2% rate increase over a five year period. And if we focus again on the average residential user, focus on about a $5 difference per year. Now this is new territory. So this is one of the new five options that we, that we have for you this evening. And I believe that you've seen these already. Uh, from our last meeting, we discussed how the board was interested in focusing on a target of 25% retained earnings. So we have been focused on that with the new options, and you'll see a theme here with that. So this first new option focuses on getting to 25% at the end of the five-year period, but doing so using level rate increases on a yearly basis. And what the level rate increase is calculated to be, out to be is about 2.83% on a yearly basis to hit 25% in the fifth year. Mr. Chair? Right. I, if I, may, I don't think we were trying to hit 25% in the fifth year. I thought we were trying to hit 25% uh, within the second year and carry 25% over. That made me, I'm, I'm mis So, Mr. Chair, one, I believe one or maybe even more of the options is focused on that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. This, but okay. this is just another thing to consider, another thing to look at. <clears throat> so option five is a much different take on it. We're focused on 25 percent in each of the five years, and you'll see how the rates are jumping all over the place oh, no. in option oh, no. five. So, Mr. Chair, this would satisfy what you just mentioned, hitting 25 percent the second year, but it would also satisfy hitting it in the first year. There's a lot of jumping around here with these rates. Yeah, that is a lot of jumping around. There's yeah. a lot of jumping around here. It's a 200% jump. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go over big. Again, just another thing to look at. So option six, Mr. Chair, doesn't have 25% in the second year. Um, what we did was we focused on a 1% decrease in each of the first three years because um, doing so still allowed retained earnings projected to be over 25% in those years. 
but once we got below that threshold of 25%, that's when we focus on increases. So you'll see in FY21, which is the fourth year in our analysis, there's a pretty significant rate increase there to get back up to the 25% threshold. Which number is this Five. Option six. Option six. This is option six that we're focused on right now. Option uh, no, six, okay. And option seven and option eight are very similar to option six, but just with a different initial rate decrease and subsequently a larger rate increase in year four to make up for the larger decrease in the first three years. So option seven, we're looking at a 2% decrease over the first three years and the necessary increase in the fourth year to get back up to 25%. But then the fifth year, fifteen percent decrease. In the fifth year, in order to Six stay at twenty-five percent, we're looking at a decrease as well. Yes. And all of these models are assuming that all the capital <coughs> projects that are projected to be done are in fact supported by town meeting and are done. So um, there's several assumptions in these models that may or may not play out. Yeah. But given the growth of the community and the revenues coming for this infrastructure to happen, it would likely, I would, I would think that they're gonna go through, mm -hmm. but we still don't, and that's not 100% certain. I like the models except for that fourth year and every one of these models, that's not gonna happen. We can't do that to the rate payers, so we gotta figure that out. Well, option seven actually has us going down. 22 by 15 percent. Can you see option seven up there? Option seven's on the screen. Option oh. six, option seven both have the 58 going down 15 percent. And uh, it's two, five, six, and seven all do. And then there's a spike, like a big spike. Yeah, yeah but there's that spike in there's the year. There's a huge 21. spike at the end, yeah. yeah. 27%. That's 100 bucks. Okay, no, that's in, that's in five. Yeah, but, but look at option six. Minus one, up three and a half, up nine and a half, up 5.8, and then mm -hmm. minus 15. So I, that's what I get. How come it's all of a sudden? I'm looking at option six right yeah, there on the screen. Mr. Yeah. Chair, which, which option are you looking yeah, at? Yeah, I'm seeing. Are you in, you're I'm in the option sewer. Six. You're oh. in the sewer. Oh, shoot. Sorry, you guys. Oh, that makes me feel bad. Oh, I got it, thanks. So, can I ask a question? <clears throat> yeah. Do we have contingency plans in place? Um, like, say, so, so we, say the, I know because I grew up on, off of Route 85, if they flush a hydrant, you get a ton of rust, a ton of stuff like that that's coming out of the hydrants. I don't work in the DPW, I don't understand all that, but I'm guessing that if there's rust there, it's probably lessened the diameter, the inside diameter of this water main, and at some point, I don't think that, that we have like a, the ability to go and like scrape it down and, and bring it back. The pipes are probably pretty old. What happens if we have a massive failure on this, um, on a main, say on 85 or, or <coughs> something like that? Do we have a contingency plan for something like Because I think a lot of our infrastructure is getting pretty old, and um, I'd hate to, to I'd hate to start taking a percent off of our water bill or sewer bill and put it back in our pocket. Where if we know that in ten years, seven years, or you know, we can hypothetically think that in seven, five, however many years it is that if some of these major water lines need to be replaced, that we're, we're not gonna have to go to the town and say, this is gonna come out of our pocket. Like this town hall, you know, we, we it's a great thing that happened. I mean, I'm sorry that the town hall got flooded, but instead of going to the town now for $5 million in 10 years to renovate it, we pay a thousand dollar deductible to our insurance and, and we get a brand new town hall out of it. So does the same thing happen if, if, a, if a massive failure in this water main uh, on one of these lines happens does insurance pay for that or are we holding the bag I just I would hate to to give back whether it's you know $30 a year $40 a year to the town on this where 
if we could if we have a master plan that we could kind of start throwing some stuff in there saying this has to be replaced and proactively if we think it's going to go in 10 years we can replace it in eight that's a that's a thought that's crossed my mind after the last meeting yeah. and uh, I'm sorry mr. I know mr. Westerling might be the one that, to answer that question he's yeah. not here but we, we can answer the insurance piece the water infrastructure is not covered the same way as town hall. Okay. Mm. Mr. Chairman, uh, the town has been pretty proactive over the past several years. We've replaced uh, Spring Street Water Main, Downtown yep. Water Main. We've had two on the last couple of town meetings for Hayden Rose Street. We've tried to target those older problem area ones to try to avoid that, yep. that massive one. So we, we have that plan going forward to try okay. to be preventative and be proactive so that we don't get that the big one that yeah. <laughs> the drains yeah. everything at once. Okay, thank you. But you know, I, but you know, through that through that last meeting, um, you know, we are holding, you know, we're, we're holding a million four, and um, you know, at, at, at what sixty seven, sixty eight percent, you know, and if we only need twenty five percent, then that's you know, that's that's coming from the experts. And that's what they're saying. We, we should, you know, do we do we do we keep it in the town coffers or do we keep it in people's pockets? For an extra year, you know, if if we go down even one percent or two percent, whatever it is this year, we're going to be voting on this again next year. It's not like we we do it once every five years. We're voting on this again next year. If you know this this thirty five percent, you know, th or thirty seven percent in the fourth year, well, next year we go up by one percent. That doesn't happen. But to, but to show good faith and to go down this year when we have the money, then I think that's the right thing to do. So but, uh, you know, I, under I understand what you're saying there, and I, I do default. I mean, defer to the to the experts, but I wouldn't be doing my job as as a selectman to say, what if we have if we have a say what the water main coming down West Main Street, down Bear Hill, massively goes, and we have to replace that whole thing. How do we pay for that? Well, what? I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yes. Well, if I may, based on the discussion at the last meeting, it seemed like the consensus was that we were pretty healthy in retained earnings for a while. Um, we were well within the comfort margin, so we could afford, literally as well as figuratively, to get those returned earnings, let those go down a little bit without increases but then we did this exercise of what if what if we went the other direction what if we went down 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 what if we even did a decrease similar to what we did as the under with the underwrite so it's very interesting to see these figures because um, I understand the philosophy of wanting to keep money in the taxpayers pockets or put the money back or not have people today paying for something five years down but the the figures that the Abrams group have shown us with these wild fluctuations that occur make me very uncomfortable and um, even even with a one or two percent increase you're talking a steady but very slow very small increase which I think over time I mean I suppose people notice every cent but a, a difference of two or four dollars on their bill from one year to the next is not anywhere near the same as when all of a sudden your bill goes up by seventy dollars or $100. Um, I, I am not comfortable with these new scenarios that produce these wild fluctuations. I, I think in the long run, um, the townspeople are going to be more unsettled by that kind of a thing happening to their water and sewer bills than um, a small increase if needs be. So, you know, whether we decide to push those retaining earnings out a little bit and, uh, you know, do a flat increase for no increase for this year and then address it another year or so. Well, we I all, can we see do doing it, we, that. We, we do it every year. Though that's the thing. It's not we address it in the year. No, so every no. Every year they come before us and we and we set the rates. Right, right. And and like the zero percent increase, keeping things flat. Um, you know, we start to get down there in retained earnings, and I think the third third year starts to get a little lower. So you know, as I said, we could address it then. But to go the other direction and and then pay the piper later with big fluctuations, I I yeah. Uh, I don't feel comfortable with that. Well, at, at, our, at our last meeting, uh, it was we were, it, it seemed like a very s strong group that was saying 
let's let's go for the uh, minus one or two two percent. And it's and it's and, and actually the average bill I think he had up there if it goes up by one percent was fifty dollars. But we haven't seen the numbers yet. No, 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 no. But if it if it goes up one percent and it goes down one percent, it's the same fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. It's not seven dollars or six dollars. Mm -hmm. It's it's fifty. Um, you know, that two percent would be uh, would be a hundred dollars if that if it runs runs linearly. Um, but uh, you know, I just I just wanted to show uh, the uh, taxpayers or the ratepayers that uh, uh, that when when the town when we are at sixty seven percent a sixty four percent retained earnings that. Um, we can we can give some back, and then next year next year we, we, we do minus two this year we do plus two next year, but we're just saying you know why should it be in our pockets and not theirs, even if it's fifty dollars in a year or a hundred dollars. I know that my, my size house we use more than that average. I just add that yeah. if you go down two percent the following year, in order to make up for that, you not only have to go up two percent, but you have to go up two additional percent. The problem with that type of scenario is, is that companies depend on budgeting a certain amount each year, mm -hmm. and they expect inflationary increases, and they build them in. When you begin to, to, to um, uh, manipulate the rates like this, and you get start to get these fluctuations, say the money for the eight hundred and eighty-four thousand for the new connection fees doesn't come in when it's supposed to. Well, maybe it comes in earlier than it's supposed to. If you don't keep some sort of level budgeting to go towards a target base and every year you're re-looking at it, is what causes some of these fluctuations. Uh, um, many, I, I've worked in, in, in um, been a part of many utilities, and uh, most of them have what's called the rate stabilization fund which is something that they put money aside, such as this, in order that they can maintain a stable rate uh, so that it doesn't, you don't get these wild fluctuations. That's when, when you go year to year and you don't stick with the plan that uh, has been discussed previously, we went up the prior year, I believe 2.75. Now all of a sudden, if we go down two, you'll begin to get some of these fluctuations. And it, it makes it difficult for families and for, 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 uh, for uh, companies to budget properly. I just think it's bad, it, I think it's just bad for us to always just assume that when, when the first, first ones came in, we, you had zero plus one plus two. Do we always have to go up? When we, go, when we had this, this um, uh, when all those connection fees were paid up at once, I don't see that we always should have to go up. You know, once in a while, why you, why can't we? You know, even if it's uh, fifty bucks or a hundred bucks, give it back to the, give it back to the rate. But I, if it's uh, if it's the will of the board, um, if somebody wants to make a motion, Mr. Kamal, do you have any, anything to? I think it, it, because this has come up several times, um, it needs to be clarified, uh, and, and I'm going to read from a statement that we had prepared, that in FY26, and I'm speaking in regard to the MUSE connection fees and how they impact this discussion. Uh, in FY2016, the water connection fee is totaling 1.12 million for connections for the Muse buildings were collected by the town. This collection had a major impact on the most recent certification of retained earnings for the Water Enterprise Fund as of July 1, 2016. The certified amount was 1.381925 uh, million. The certified amount as of July 1, 2015 was only 24,000. The town's initial expectations were that about half of the Mules connection fees would be collected in FY 2016, and the remaining connection fees would be collected in FY 2017. If half of the connection fees were collected in FY 2016, then certified retained earnings as of July 1, 2016, would have been less than 800,000, which equates to about 41% of the 
FY 2017 operating budget. Uh, projected retained earnings at the end of FY 2017 would be the same regardless of the timing of the connection fee collection, assuming all of the connection fees were collected by the end of 2017. What, what we have been said in our past discussions is the fact that in addition to the large amount of connections that recently took place for the Muse buildings, the town has plans to connect over 400 buildings at Legacy Farms North. Per the town's agreement with Legacy Farms developer, the developer is to be reimbursed a certain amount of money in connection fee revenues prior to the town the town's collection of connecting fees revenue for legacy farms properties. Projections indicate that the town will start to collect connection fee revenue for legacy farms north properties in the first half of FY 2019, i.e., I want to underscore that, the first half of FY 2019, and will collect for about 300 of the 425 legacy farms north connections for an estimated 212,000 in 2019, an estimated 336,000 in 2020, and an estimated 336,000 in 2021, which totals 884. And thus, the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm pulling this up is to highlight the fact that we were fortunate to get the 1.12 million upfront. Um, we also have a situation that we need to deal with at Legacy Farms where we anticipate a, a higher number of connections, but that, that income, all of that income, only part of that income will be coming to the town because of the agreement that we have with the developer in relation to the cost that the developer paid in building the well at Legacy Farms. Could, did I hear you right that said that we have to reimburse the builder? The developer, yes. The developer? Yes. For what? They for building the well. They built the well. Yes. Built the infrastructure. Yeah. Okay, but but the the net the net net of it is that two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, three hundred thirty six thousand each of those years that the town will be getting. Yes. Now is is that figured into these yes, costs? It is. Okay. Yes. Mr. Chair, yes. um I'm kind of on both sides of this one. I, I, I see the, the merit and I like the idea of reducing like one or two percent uh, because I've always believed to leave it in the taxpayer's pocket as long as possible. But having seen the numbers tonight and seen a couple of those spikes just two or three years out, that does make me a little nervous. Uh, so with that, I would move that the, we set the water rate for FY18 at a zero percent increase year over year. Second that. That's very fair. Okay. Any further discussion? I, yes. I mean, the reason I'm seconding that is looking at the scenario with the zero percent, and a couple years out, we can then adjust it again. Mm -hmm. But for the next two years, we're still in a comfortable range on returned er, retained earnings. So mm -hmm. it's not to say we're not going to address it later on, but we're still in the comfort zone for a couple years right. with that. See, but, but for me, the, the comfort zone was be, was retained earnings between 10 and 25 percent. When we said 25 percent, that was on the high end of what the experts said that we should retain. You know, we don't need to keep. 60% retained earnings in the bank just to feel comfortable. Now, they, now, now, we all like to have money in the bank, but this isn't our money. This is the taxpayer's money, or the ratepayer's money. And, and when the experts say 25%, you know, to, to zero's, zero's fine if, if that's what we want to do. But we're going to, we, we, next year at this exact time, well, maybe we'll do it a little bit earlier and we'll put a little more time away for it. And we won't try and. Please. But, <laughs> But uh, next year we're going to be right here, and it's not like in two or three years. We're, it's not. We're not going to wait for that spike. Next year we could say we, so. We do minus one this year, and then next year we look and say, okay, so we might have to just go to zero this year, or we or we do a one percent increase. But for this year, we're giving those people that that fifteen hundred dollars back in their pocket, and um, and then next year we say, okay, so we're going to go up one percent, and then we look at the numbers for 21, 22, 23. 
And then in, in, in two years, we look at it again. Okay, maybe we have to go up 1%. Or that $300,000 comes in from, from, uh, from Legacy Farms, and we look at it and say, geez, we can keep it at zero again. You know, I, I just think it's tough to look out five years and, and make our decision of, of keeping it zero because of, because of what's going to happen in five years from now. That's just my opinion. Yeah. So, you know, on, on the flip side of that is maybe that $300,000 doesn't come in, and then that spike that's going to go up $40 now turns into $240. So, again, I'm one person on the on the board that I'm 20% of the vote, or 25% today. Um, yeah. I, well, well, there's a there's a motion on the table for for a zero percent, and, and um, it's seconded. And it's seconded. So, any further discussion? Any discussion? Yeah. Um, yeah. Sure, my new absolutely. Come on. Uh, having set water rates for many many years, and uh, uh, I think I was the one that brought the group on board probably 20 years ago now uh, to help us get out of the uh, the real mess we had with the sewer. Uh, uh, I, I agree with this gentleman's uh, uh, comments that we want to keep a constant um, kind of a rate setting so uh, the rate payers, businesses in particular, have, have know what they're going to pay each year. Mm -hmm. uh, we're a very small enterprise fund, so 25% uh, is a very small number for us. But if we have, if we have an issue, uh, you know, pipe, any good tank, costs the same for a small utility as a large utility. It's very expensive. So uh, I don't think having a more than 25% is, is a bad thing for a small enterprise. You so said then that's what's confusing to me then. Why, why are we being told that 25% is a comfortable spot when we're also being told that 25% is not a comfortable spot? So what is the comfortable number? Is it 25? Is it 40? Is it 50? What's that number? Because it's, you know, uh, you know I, I, if, you, if you're telling me that the comfortable number is 40%, then I'll feel comfortable saying, saying zero. But otherwise, I'd like to say minus one. But if you... But if, if, if these assumptions that we're, we're thinking about don't come, okay. come through, All right. you're, looking, you're looking at a bigger increase <laughs> in a year or two. Right, but, but we'll just we'll vote again. Okay. So there's most on the table for, for, for zero. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. No. Passes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I applaud your efforts, Mr. Chair, valiant effort. Okay. Let's go down to sewer. Let's go to sewer, okay. I, mean, I was the one that wanted to move us along. Yeah. Okay, now let's so, go to sewer. So take the us, sewer. Take us down the sewer. <laughs> Okay, so the slides for sewer are, are very similar setup to what you just saw for water. The slide you're looking at right now is the baseline scenario or the do nothing scenario with uh, re retained earnings projections over the five year period and you can see that they dwindled down to about 2% in year five. Uh, there, uh, the now all the analyses that we did include all the items in the capital plan, and the town did receive preliminary results of a, a sewer system study recently. It was told that no major capital work is expected in the near future, so that plan would not need to be enhanced, at least not yet. And the uh, certified retained earnings uh, for FY16 came in at just under 1.2 million dollars for sewer. So uh, we have the same eight slides for you for sewer as we did for water with, this, with similar um, rate options. Option one is the original option one that we showed you recently. This is a 0% over five years. It's the same as the baseline you just saw. Option two is the 1% over five year period. And option three is the 2% over the five year period. And you can see by the graph going downward, but starting to rebound a little bit, that retain earnings do, with this option, start to trend back towards the 25% that we've been focused on. For the average residential user, you're looking at about $12 <coughs> on a yearly basis with this scenario. 
Option four, this is the level rate increase targeting 25% at the end of year five. It's very similar to this previous slide because the rate calculations came in at just over 2% at 2.16, whereas the previous slide was 2% over the five-year period. And here's the, the spiky, the most spiky one, which is the 25% target in each of the years. You'll see it's very similar to water where the rate changes are jumping all over the place in order to hit the 25%. Option six is similar to option six for water as well, but we're focused on a decrease only in year one, and then what it would take in the subsequent years in order to hit 25%. So you'll see that the rate increases are a little bit larger than some of the other options here for the reason that we're going down 1% in year one. If I may, sorry, sorry to do. So what happens in, in 2022 there? <clears throat> It, uh, what happens there, Mr. Chair, is I believe it's related to the debt service coming off the books at that point. Oh, okay. The expenses are simply less at that point, and that's why we're seeing a little bit of a drop. So that's debt that's currently on the books. <coughs> option seven, very similar to the previous option, just that we're focused on a 2% decrease in the first year and subsequent increases in order to make up for that in the subsequent years. And option A is a 5% decrease in the same setup. Okay. So, uh, uh, so option two is a 1% increase? Option two is what we presented originally as yeah, option okay. two? Yes, 1%, yeah, but it's, a, okay. it's over a five year period. Mm -hmm. Do you see any reason, I'm looking at the, at the percentages here, so do you see any reason, of, is there any concern to you that um, if we stay at 1%, if we raise 1%, our percentages on sewer are significantly lower than the percentages on water to have, so why is the percentages on sewer so much less than like where it it's it's uh, through you mr. chair it's it's based on the starting point really that there's a higher amount of retained earnings currently and um, mm -hmm. for water than there is for sewer and, and plus you're not going to get the influxes of cash that have to do with the connection fees on okay. the sewer side that, that that's why you're not seeing as much variability as you're seeing on the sewer side. Okay. Cash flow. Thank you. And we don't have the capital. We don't, the, there's no foreseeable big capital um, pro projects coming up. Correct. Correct. Okay. So I'm looking at option number two, where it's a one percent increase. For the average residential user, a 1% increase for next year goes up about $6, $6, $6. So I like having a little bit more in the, in the reserve. I don't think, I'd like to make a motion for original option number two, where the sewer rates increase 1%. Second. Keep our to keep us up around the 25 percent. Mm -hmm. Well, we will be at 36 percent for this year. That's true, and if we continue on, we'll be at 11. And I know we can look at it every year, but I would rather pay. I would rather, personally, I would rather have throw a little bit into the coffer each each year, each month, each quarter, however it works, and then in a couple of years, if I have to buy a water tank for my house, I'd rather have to pay. 50 bucks than to save the 10 bucks a year and have to pay 200 bucks. That's my thought on it. Okay, so we have a motion and a second for a 1% raise. Any further discussion? Mr. Herr? Oh, then Mr. Kamalo? Nothing to add at this point. Okay. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 No. <laughs> Any abstain? Aye. <laughs> he yes. wouldn't have. <laughs> okay, water and sewer. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. your, your, your you. patience with us and patience with me. <laughs> okay, now let's get back to uh, marathon invitational entries. We are oh, over an hour behind. I'm sorry, everyone. I, I apologize. That was, we got stuck on the uh, on a couple things here. Can we go to commercials so I can have discussion with the chair? <laughs> Mr. Chair, uh, quickly on the invitational entries, I think this is another beautiful story coming from the community. Um, it keeps getting better with each year. Uh, this year, the invitational entries raised uh, $277,000 for local charities. Uh, this was up from 258000 last year. So I want to congratulate all the uh, groups, the individual runners, the nonprofit organizations that did this wonderful work for the community. Again, it's a good story. It's excellent. person raised 13 5 10 it's unbelievable yeah. it's good okay mr hood do you have anything no it's great it's steady year after year after year it's getting stronger and stronger and i think we've gotten better and more reasonable and fair in how we disperse the numbers and uh really excited to see the results it's all good that's right no, it's great. Um, just a question, Mr. Kamala. Is there a, like a basic amount that they're expected to raise on one of these? There, there is some fluctuation. Some raise more, some raise less. But some of the smaller amounts, is there is there something they're expected to reach? Yeah, I, I believe the guideline was four point five, four and a half thousand. Mm -hmm. But that's a guideline. Yeah, that was the guideline. Okay, so some of the ones that came in less, they're not expected to make up the difference or anything. They no, they're not. Yeah, so yeah. about four, four point five is the guideline. Yeah. Thank you. That is a common practice, though, with the charity numbers of a lot of organizations, just so we know that if you get a number from a certain charity and you're, the charity says you have to raise $5,000 and you raise three, they take your credit card information and on a certain date they charge another $2,000 to get yeah. to that five. Yeah. We haven't put that on our charities in Hopkinton, but that's a very common practice in all kinds of other fundraising Mm -hmm. today in, in America, mm -hmm. um, certainly with the cost of America too. And people understand that, they do mm -hmm. it, but yeah. it's not unheard of. But you say that's, that's to the individual runner who decides to run for that, for that organization? The organization Ooh. makes the decision whether or not they're going to have a minimum themselves, mm -hmm. and then they enforce that minimum through a credit card in most cases. I would cancel my credit card. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so do we, um, is there a motion on this one? Is there only for a motion? Okay. I think it's wonderful. Thank you very much, everybody, for all their hard work. Thank you, marathon committees. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hi. Hi. Yeah. This is the Library Foundation update. Okay. Laura Berry. Scott Richardson. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. We just um, wanted to give you an update on um, our uh, fundraising that we've been doing for the library. As you know, we set a goal a few years back to raise a million dollars for the, to offset the cost of the library. And we're very pleased and excited to let you know that we've reached about 95% of that um, because of the community's overwhelming support and enthusiasm about the project. Um, we've been very, um, very honored to work on this project and really have been thrilled by the community's overwhelming support. Uh, we've done it in a couple of different ways, but one of the um, events, Marathon Runners, one of the um, main things that we have done is uh, offer a plaque with uh, families or individuals, community groups names, a collective plaque that we'd like to display in the library as well as individual naming opportunities, which would be smaller individual plaques. 
Um, we had talked this over with the board when we started this program a few years back with sort of the understanding that we'd kind of come back to you and let you know how it went. It has gone fantastic. Um, it's, people have been very enthusiastic. And I think what really, um, what we've seen from all this is that people love their library and love having, um, having their name attached to a piece of history. So we've been very pleased to, um, to work on this. Um, just to echo uh, uh, Laura's uh, comments and again a tribute to the the committee that's really been uh, working so hard on a, a lot of various events uh, over the years to again raise the raise the funds uh, privately to really help offset the cost uh, to the taxpayers ultimately um, so again you probably attended quite a few of the events over the years and uh, uh, they've been quite successful uh, most recently with the touch a truck uh, event which raised twenty thousand twenty thousand dollars in itself um, in three hours Wow it was amazing yeah so the community is obviously very supportive of this uh, we're excited as we see the project uh, nearing completion and uh, we're looking forward to having a grand opening uh, celebration and we're just uh, looking to close in close in that gap that last fifty thousand dollar gap for uh, to reach our our commitment Excellent. and and you, you can have a gala with uh, alcohol being served I believe from we have here. every intention of having a <laughs> gala yes that's a no good deed goes unpunished at the Excellent. Yeah, that, that's great. You know, it's, it's seeing seeing ninety five percent. That's that really is that's wonderful. And that touch of truck uh, that was I, what an amazing accomplishment that was. It's just three hours. Uh, this yeah, no, that's good. And it, does that truck touch a truck get bigger every year? Yes, it has been getting bigger. We're pretty much doubling every year. We started it um, five years ago. Last year we were um, oh, just thrilled with. 1,500 attendees, and this year we literally doubled it. Um, so word of mouth has been fantastic. Um, we have members of the community who contact us and say, can we join you? We'd love mm -hmm. to bring our trucks. And we've, um, we've had great support. So we're, we're very honored to be able to, to run that and that people enjoy it. Is that unique to the library? I've never heard of that fundraiser before until until Hopkinton. Is that just a Hopkinton thing, or do they do we, it elsewhere? We've heard we do it well, is, yeah. is what we've We heard. do it the best, but there are <laughs> of others. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> great. Awesome. It's done. No, Touch a Truck's great. My kids love it. Um, I love it. I have a lot of friends that have vehicles in it that love doing it, and uh, I think this whole thing is just over the top well done and uh, it's not surprising I, I know Mr. Richardson does a phenomenal job in everything that he touches and we're lucky to have a guy like him working in front of the scenes and behind the scenes and, um, same thing with Mr. Barry it's, thank you very much for doing all this and uh, it's going to be nice to have this this library open up and, and, uh, and generations to come to be able to use that Absolutely. thank you, thank you. Uh, one of my son's favorite uh, lines growing up, or our favorite line from growing up, uh, when he was little, he was like three or four years old, and we said, what would you like for Christmas this year? He goes, I want a billion boxes of trucks. <laughs> <laughs> so we've always repeated, a billion boxes of trucks. Um, the fundraising is $50,000. I'm assuming some of that's from different ent ent uh, resources, including the 1,000 homes for Hopkinton. Yes, so we, we broke it down for you to um, the 95%. About 275 has been 1,000 homes, which is the $1,000 gifts. And on, on top of that, another 350 have been gifts of $2,500 or more. Um, in addition to that, so that right there gives us the 625 75, sorry, my math is not good right now. Um, that gives us the lion's share of our fundraising. We've um, raised 240,000 on events in the last five years. We generally, um, between um, three or four events, 
generate about $50,000 net in uh, fundraising on events. And we've done Touch a Truck, Princess Tea, Hoptoberfest is very popular, Pink Drink Night. Uh, we've done mini golf and we did a heritage <coughs> quilt program. In addition to that, the marathon fundraising, which are the bibs that the town has offered to us for the last several years too, has generated $85,000. So that has been phenomenal. It's really important. We've had great, um, uh, great community support, great runners, uh, very enthusiastic um, fundraising. We've had runners who've raised 10,000, as much as 10,000, and another that raised as much as 20,000. So typically they go above and beyond what their minimum commitment is and, mm -hmm. and have done wonderful for us. One of the last payments due on the various ones, so I am aware of one final payment due. Yes. Um, what does that do by? Yes, so um, some of the original um, Thousand Homes members that did a, a four-year commitment, their commitments would be ending this year. We have been taking commitments for the last couple of years. So we've what we've decided as a board that um, because that spreading out over four years has been very popular is that this will be the last year we'll take the four-year commitments because we do want to um, you know finalize the list of, of 1,000 homes. So if there are families that want to do the four-year commitment, we still welcome and appreciate that. We will be staying um, together as an entity to um, manage those pledges. So we will be sending reminders. Um, the funds will be, if we collect them, they will still be 100% tax deductible um, through our 501c3. And um, that way we still are taking responsibility as a volunteer board and then the, the town will, will ultimately be the beneficiary just like the other ones. I also wanted to uh, recognize uh, Katie Davenport and uh, Pam Polico are here as well. Uh, they're on our committee and they do a lot of the work behind the scenes as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's much appreciated. That, you know, everybody's still looking forward to the uh, library opening and, and, and you know, going to church every Sunday, driving by and seeing it, and seeing it change because we don't go to town hall anymore. <laughs> see it every, see it every week, uh, but it's, it's just great seeing it grow and get get closer to fruition. So thank you very much. Thanks for all your hard work. It's really much appreciated. Thank you. It's been our pleasure. The whole town thanks you. And I do have one request yes. for the board to consider. Uh, as you recall, uh, the 300th uh, anniversary, we had uh, banners uh, downtown that uh, the 300th committee raised the funds for, paid for, and uh, coordinated getting them installed. Uh, what we would like to do is develop a banner specifically for the uh, you know, grand reopening of the library um, and would hope that the board might be able to consider uh, funding that. We wouldn't be looking at doing whatever we did. We had like 60 or so uh, banners. We'd only be looking at maybe 20 from uh, maybe uh, Grove Street up to Ash Street along Main Street because the stanchions are still installed. So it's a matter of just getting the banners printed and then installed. Um, so I'd, ma I'd be making a request for some funding uh, from any resource that you might have at your disposal uh, to fund that aspect because we thought we'd, we would really like to see a banner, a series of banners downtown kind of commemorating this, announcing it, and having those up for a few months uh, while the library, you know, when the library reopens. Mr. Kamala, how did we fund the 300th before, and there is there is there a a uh, method to make this work? Staff will work with the foundation to get this done. I love that answer. Excellent. Thank you. Work with Mr. Kamala's office, please. That's great. We'll follow up. That'll be fun. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you again. Thank you. Thank Thanks, Okay, um, item 10, section 19, conflict of interest form. For a second, review and approve, disapprove a section 19 con conflict of interest form by Michael Owen. Owen, member of the Hopkins Historic District Commission, resident of the district. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Carl, can you uh, take us through this one? Yes, uh, the board. The board may recall um, sometime last year, 
we received specific advice from town council regarding conflict of interest issues and the new laws. Uh, we, as part of that conversation, uh, communicated to certain boards that specifically had work uh, and and charges um, based on either the bylaw or the committee charge uh, that most likely would involve um, work um, close to or in the vicinity of their own property. Um, and it is in um, in this regard that uh, Mr. Mr. Owen has uh, submitted this conflict of interest to the board for your consideration. So I know Mr. Owen. And I know that Mr. Allen doesn't own a home in this district. Mm -hmm. Mr. Allen rents, but he doesn't own a home there. So does that make a difference on this conflict of interest? No, it does not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Since you're in, you're in the historic district. Well, I mean, I also know that there are several different categories of membership required under Mass General Law Chapter 40C that set the, sets out the historic district, and one of them is to be a resident of the district. I actually think Beth Kelly uh, wears the resident of the district hat, but just by the fact that part of the makeup of the board is supposed to be someone who lives in the district, I, um, I just don't see that that would be a conflict, and, and the types of decisions that board make uh, makes are are more aesthetic than. Uh, than affecting someone's property value. I don't see any problem with Mr. it. Mr. Hart, you're ready to put. He's a realtor, too. I think that's the hat he probably wears. So you're good? I I'm would good. Be. Yeah. You're good. Mr. Kamalo, are you good? So the are you good yeah, with the? Yes, we, we recommend that the board accept okay, this. That's, uh, that's okay, that's what I was looking for. Excellent. OK, uh, Chair will a motion to uh, uh, approve the uh, conflict of interest from uh, that was filed. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, unanimous. Okay, street acceptance, orders of taking. The board will consider voting pursuant to Article 53 of the May 1st, 2017 annual town meeting to execute orders of taking the following private ways. Cider Mill Road, Cranberry Lane, Cold Spring Brook Road, Pine Tree Lane, together with the easements for drainage, utility, and other purposes. Ms. Lazarus, I know this is yours. How many yes. times do we have to look at these streets? Oh, there'll be one more time after this. <laughs> exactly. So, but this is just following up on the town meeting vote uh, to move to uh, execute the orders of taking. I move to accept the article as written. <laughs> <laughs> There's a motion. There's a motion. I, I was wondering, I knew there was going to be a lot more for this. I move that the Board of Selectmen vote pursuant to Article 53 of the May 1, 2017 Annual Town Meeting to execute orders of taking of the following private ways. Cider Mill Road, Cold Spring Brook Lane, Cranberry Lane, Pine Tree Lane, formerly Jerry Lane, together with easements for drainage utilities and other purposes. So second. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, it's unanimous. All right. And uh, I'll have you know that we're catching up. Mr. Aye, we're Ted catching Stone. up, but we've got a ways to okay. go, buddy. Keep, keep going. Board liaison reports and invites. To, what do we have for invites? Is it the invitational season? So we got something from the College of the Holy Cross. Center of Hope Foundation. Yeah, there's the College of Holy Cross, June 13th, 2017. There's also the Streets of the Future discussion. Um, this is, we're getting a lot of invitations on this topic, and should board members be interested, let us know. Uh, and Elaine, let's also share these invitations with the planning board. Again, it's focused on the Streets of the Future. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. And then save the date, Massachusetts Green Carriers Conference, October 4th to the 6th. And, and by the way, if I may, since I mentioned, we mentioned Green, we have good news one more time. Dev Del Torrio working with uh, Opry Doyle and, and John Keane have done it. We got a grant from the uh, Green Communities uh, Act uh, a fund. Uh, coming to the town, I think it's approximately 250 
forty. Yeah, two hundred yeah, two hundred and forty thousand dollars. Yeah. And and what's that grant uh Green communities? Oh. Green communities, Green. yes. to the uh, elementary school building committee and that is going great that school's coming along nicely uh, they're, they're working well within their budget and they are targeted to open at the projected opening date the committee works pretty hard I attended the school committee subcommittee specific to the fields development program for the entire community um, this morning there's been a couple since our last meeting but I attended this morning as well and uh, they're continuing to kind of look at design possibilities uh, looking at funding sources uh, there's been some discussion about uh, CPC supporting similar to what they did for fruit streets and so it was a town-wide initiative not just a school initiative um, but the committee continues to do its work and uh, is hoping to come here at some point soon and present to the board and the community as a whole uh, should our agenda allow it at some time. I told the chair to reach out to the chair here. So. Excellent. Um, Ms. Wright? Um, well, since I wasn't at the June 6th meeting, I'll go back a little bit in May. I did attend the um, Five Town Board of Selectmen meeting which if anyone has an occasion to go to one of those um, it's very interesting just to s exchange ideas with uh, I think the towns are Holliston, Ashland, Millis, Medway and Hopkinton. Um, incidentally three of those towns Medway, Millis and Holliston are all using the ClearGov system which we have talked about we might want to consider that again they all seem quite quite happy to have it. Um, unfortunately I, I think the turn might be coming out of Hoppington. I told them, sorry, our town hall's out of out of order, so <laughs> we can't we can't offer to host right away. But um, anyway, it, it's um, an interesting uh, group. If someone is interested in attending one of the fall meetings, um, and and just following up on the green communities because I happen to have the letter here that was sent. So someone asked what it was for. Uh, the letter said. Uh, is an award of $224,812. The projects are um, Hopkins Elementary Install VFDs. What are VFDs? Very oh, okay. Um, 92500 at Hopkins Elementary. Uh, LED lighting at Hopkins, at Hopkins Elementary, 40, 46500 And um, also at Hopkins Elementary EMS upgrade for 85725 So that's almost a quarter million dollars in uh, good funds job. that came into the town. Yeah. Thank you for good, good job. Work. And um, last week uh, I attended the, uh, uh, some of the uh, interviews for the uh, new director of Board of Health. That was that seems to be going to be a great job bringing some wonderful candidates. I really want to hand it to um, to the uh, personnel committee and the and uh, HR. Great job, Mr. Brown. A great job. So, thank you. I have one more thing. Yes. So this isn't a board <coughs> or liaison, but uh, I was up at the Timlin race this week, and I'd like to, uh, you know, mention that there was a, um, a medical emergency that required defibrillation and uh, fast-acting work on one of the runners in order to keep him alive, and from all uh, all reports back that I got I didn't actually go to it but um, I understand the that the man is uh, is alive and uh, doing all right and um, it's not surprising how fast that the police and fire jump into uh, into that mode and 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 go into a quick life-saving mode but um, you know like mr. Hur said uh, you know we try to catch people doing good jobs and uh, it's a wonderful job that you did. I know the fire chief's here with us tonight, and he doesn't like to get called on the carpet for his accolades, but um, 
it's very easy for people to go out there and complain about the about uh, the bad stuff and uh, I know that uh, obviously the family is is very happy that that uh, you were there when you that you guys were there when you were and uh, as a selectman I thank you for doing the great job that you guys do and as a taxpayer it's nice to know that you guys are there when we need you so thank you very much job well done Thanks, Steve. okay mr. Kamalo Town manager's report. Yes, um, one item. I'm requesting the board to. Oh, Mr. Hayes, stepping off. Requesting the board to uh, consider approving the pilot agreement with Marathon uh, Energy uh, DG LLC. Uh, as well as the memorandum of understanding uh, that we're proposing between the town uh, and Marathon. And, and, and the reason why we, we took the, the second step um, is twofold. One, we had specific requests and needs here in town that we discussed with Marathon. Uh, and secondly, Marathon was willing to, to work with the town towards uh, a, beneficial, a mutually beneficial uh, solution which includes two things. Uh, the town will receive net metering credits for existing and future town buildings. We're thinking specifically of the library and other town buildings which are in the SEMA account um, zone. And secondly, we, will, we have also asked uh, Marathon to uh, give priority to Hopkinton residents in uh, uh, any uh, uh, community net metering program. Okay. So, so um, any questions for Mr. Kamala? Mm -hmm. Nope. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, what's the motion for this one? Mr. Motions. I, I have the motions for the board here. Um, pretty long, because remember the these are votes that are taken uh, pursuant, in fact, in terms of the marathon pilot agreement, two town meeting votes. Um, the first one regarding the pilot agreement, if the board is so inclined to move that the selectmen vote as authorized by the vote taken under Article 59 of the 2017 Annual Town Meeting Warrant and pursuant to the vote taken under Article 50 of the 2016 Annual Town Meeting Warrant and Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 59, Section 38H, to enter into an agreement for payments in lieu of taxes for real and personal property with NRG DG Marathon LLC for a period of 25 years whereby the developer will pay the town a sum of monies per year relative to an approximately 20 acre portion of land located alongside East Main Street shown as assessor's map use 7-1-0 and which is related to the proposed construction and operation of a large scale ground-mounted solar photovoltaic installation and to execute all documents necessary and to authorize the town manager to execute any appropriate documents to effect this vote. I'm glad you read that one. Yeah. So moved. Hand it off to Mr. Tedstone. Yes. May I just, I know you just... Well, could you second it first? Well, no. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, in our note here, it speaks to Articles 58 and 59. And I don't think those are the numbers you read. You read something about Article 50. And are the articles numbered correctly? In fact, the, the agenda description incorrectly referenced Article 58. Okay. That's going to come in the future. That's in relation to the other pilot agreement that okay, was discussed. Okay, so the Tarnley. mistake is in the agenda, not yes. in what you read. Yes. Okay, yeah. now I will second. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Any further discussion? Hearing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 And then the second motion is in regard to the Memorandum of Understanding. Move that the selectmen vote to enter into a Memorandum of Understanding with NRG DG Marathon LLC relative to the solar electric generating facility proposed to be built on property shown as Assessor's Map U7-1-0 for the purpose of securing to the town the benefits of a net metering agreement permitting the town to receive a net metering credits uh, for existing and future town buildings located within the Southeast Massachusetts ISO New England Lord Zone 
and to execute all documents necessary and to authorize the town manager to do the same to effect this vote. So moved. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. How do you vote? Aye. Aye. It's unanimous again, Mr. Camillo. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else on your uh, town manager's report? No, no again, um, on, on the income from the intentional entries, I really want to thank the local nonprofits for the effort that they put into it. And also to thank uh, Maria Glynn. Uh, she did all the legwork in the office, making sure that uh, uh, everybody got what the town had assigned to them, as well as receiving back the reports on the outcome from the fundraising or fund development efforts by the nonprofits. Okay, I have yeah. one for you. Mm. What's happening with um, Temporary Town Hall? We are poised to send a public announcement uh, to to you for your review. Um, we received confirmation from Comcast that they fired up the building. And in fact, uh, Elaine is one of the two people that has already moved into test run the new location. and. Uh, We'll, we'll be in touch with you so that we can make the public announcement. Okay. Yeah. Future board agenda items. Mr. Herb. Nothing at this time. Yeah, I would like to have a joint meeting with the Affordable Housing Committee. <laughs> That'll be a short meeting. Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Yeah. Even shorter. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to get, uh, and any other uh, dormant boards that need uh, some motivating. Yeah. I don't like when he motivates. <laughs> Ms. Wright. I'm not sure whether this is for the selectmen or not, but I would like to get an update, perhaps it's from Parks and Rec, on the status of the Claflin Fountain. Um, that hmm. project was supposedly done, great rush to get it done for the 300th. They've just banned it. They've given all their money away. Uh, it's two years out and it's rusting and basically not running. I know I've had a lot of people asking me what's happened with the fountain and it's it's a rather disappointing thing. It was my understanding it was to be a thing that would run during the summertime on the common and uh, that's not happening. So you know if, if it's stalled, if there's something we need to reconvene a group to address the problems, but um, I think the townspeople uh, two years out deserve um, to know what's going on and why it's not where it's supposed to be. Yeah. Um, for the board's information, I have been in touch with uh, um, the director of the department, uh, Jay Guelfi. Um, he, he, he's very committed to making sure that the fountain is up and running as soon as possible. Uh, I believe some work was done leading to this weekend, namely uh, paint, repainting the fountain. Uh, they had um, scheduled previously um, the repainting work to be done, but because of rain, uh, they couldn't proceed. And then secondly, he also uh, confirmed that as soon as the painting is completed, uh, the, the pump structure, which has been revamped, will be installed. Uh, in addition, he did confirm that uh, Park and Rec has uh, worked out an agreement in terms of the long-term maintenance of, of the fountain to make sure that it is always running. And uh, I have one agenda item so that uh, please work with Mr. Hamilton so that we can uh, appoint him to a board at the next meeting. <laughs> okay. All right. With that, uh, the chair will entertain a motion to adjourn for the evening. So move. Until please. we meet again July 11th, 2017. I guess I need to second that, don't I? If you would, be so kind. I seconded it. Okay, any further discussion? None. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you for our studio audience. Have a great evening. Have a great, have a great uh, June. See you July 11th. Good night. No.